Hello and welcome to tonight's episode of D&D Rollers. Thank you for joining us as we explore this crazy magical world we call Dungeons and Dragons. Tonight's episode will be starting soon, so grab a snack, sit back, and prepare to join us in the jungles of Shoal as we explore D&D 5th edition, Tomb of Annihilation. Welcome everybody back to Tomb of Annihilation. I'm Dark Logic, and we have our intrepid group of adventurers. What's last up? episode, last episode, they came across uh, what appeared to be one of their compatriots, uh, former compatriots, uh, Miss Silver Tusk, I believe. Uh, she had originally told them that she was going upriver to one of the camps in the area. Uh, they came across her, would appear to be tied up and covered in honey attached to a tree. Uh, they did some battles. There's a goblin boss that appears to be frozen solid. And Miss Silver Tusk appears to be suffering from a terrible malady. Um, I believe we found out it was a curse uh, inflicted by the weapon that the goblin boss uh wield so we start off you are all standing there surrounded by the bodies of dead goblins uh you see silver tusk is breathing heavily uh on her ground as on the ground as friedrich ingles attends to her what do we want to do uh you need to move the map okay i can do that too <laughs> boom all right. Um, are we still pinning this guy to the ground, or did he die? Uh, he is being pinned to the ground. Yeah. Uh, he is currently, even though he's a goblin, uh, he is looking up at you very defiantly. Thank you, bastard. Don't let any harm come to this one. He will guide us to the treasure we're looking for. Ah, uh, yes, the treasure. The uh, cobalt told us about, correct? Indeed. Mm. Um, uh, Frederick, you're unable to attend to this curse, uh, Lady Silvertusk, until the morning, correct? That's correct. Do we think she'll make it? Give me a. Do you want to find out? Yeah. Um, someone give me a medicine check. So that would either be... Okay. Uh, I'd like to assist with him with that, but it's just... Uh, you gotta... So one of the things... So we're gonna be doing this, guys. If you want to assist on something, uh, just ask if you can assist. This is... I'll let you do this one. Go ahead and roll me again. Are you... Let me ask you a question. Are you proficient in medicine? I'm not. I'm just assisting. Then you cannot assist. Oh, I am proficient in medicine, actually. Okay, I'm then you can assist. Go go ahead and roll it again, Friedrich. Oh, shit, my bad. A seven. Uh, that wasn't Friedrich. So, Friedrich, Friedrich. If assisting something, yeah. he has to draw it twice, right? Yeah. I only heard the first half. So we <laughs> are uh, doing good things today. Um... You are totally used to dealing with different maladies, like the typically sick of, of diseases. That you identified this as some kind of cursed injury is completely beyond your knowledge of medicine. 
she looks absolutely terrible you have no idea how you're going to facilitate her um recovery she could she could not last till tomorrow um if you would like to you would have to uh if you want to make a separate check i can do so at a further date but you would have to probably spend the next hour or two doing things that you can come up with to perhaps better understand what is going on and you can explain to me what you're doing and the dc for your next medicine check will be uh, adjusted based on your ideas what time of day is it now uh it is currently i would say it's about two o'clock in the afternoon Okay. Freddy, you said that with a long rest you'd be able to prepare a spell to dispel a curse? Yep, that's right. We should get you started on whatever amounts of prayer and preparation necessary post-haste. We don't have much time. I don't know if any more of our inspections are going to do anything at this point. Uh, in the meantime, I shall attend her do my best with what I know about these jungles. We we can certainly give her comfort up until that point, but I would have you do no more than to go to rest or prayer, whatever it is that you need to, immediately if we if we hope to save her. Oh um, um, well, go ahead, go ahead. I, I I don't mean to interrupt, but um, there seems to be a item on this frozen goblin guy over here that I detected magic coming from. I don't know if it has anything to do with her um, wellness or not. I know it's extremely important. I just wanted to... Uh, I tried to remove it, but it is frozen solid. Mm. Well, uh, if one of you would try to grab that, uh, I lean down and Lady Silvertusk and I go and I'm uh, sure we, we will do everything in our power to uh, restore you, lady, but, uh, you came out here without us. Uh, I'm sure you brought a guide. Uh, if you could, do you know where that guide is? Um, let's see how she's doing to see if she can even answer you right now. Um, so as you uh, lean into her, you notice that where her stab marks off, there is a black, uh, like her veins are turning black and you can see it's very slowly creeping out and you see her just gritting her teeth as she's trying, it seems like she's trying to push through the pain to answer you. Let's see if she's able to give you an answer. Uh, yeah, she says, let's see, I gotta remember what this guy's name was. It is Shogu or Shoga or something? Yes. Shago. Um, uh, Shago. 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 Uh, she says, she says, yes. Uh, the flaming fist had a had a, a a group of adventurers with some of their guards in a guide named Shago. They came into town uh, about four days ago. Uh, I managed to hire Shago as a uh, guide as he came highly recommended. Um, we were ambushed on the banks and she starts coughing. Uh, Let's see. Yep. Uh, uh, we were separated. Uh, something about... I don't speak the language, but something about a good sacrifice. Uh, they took him by canoe further south, and they were going to feed me to the ants. Thank you. Thank you. We will... Uh... Post haste, make sure you recover and an interest of keeping oh, not sure. uh, everyone alive. We will, uh, we're already going there, so we will hunt down this Shago and save him as well. 
Forgive me. Did she say ants or ants? Uh, she said ants. She, you hear Salida? Um, she said ants. Oh. The bat the Batiri have a nasty practice of tying people to the trees, and then covering them with food so the local wildlife eats them alive. Dane shivers, remembering the cut on his arm from earlier. Salida, would you mind uh, grabbing some water from the river there, and let's we'll clean her from of the smell uh, that at least we attract these ants? Um, absolutely. Uh, we will have to use the personal water, as I would not want to put the fetid water from that river on any of her injuries. Oof. Fair enough, fair enough. Um... Um... I... Um, hey guys, I gotta take a break. Take a five-minute break, guys. Sorry. You got it. <laughs> okay. All right. Something happened. Yeah, you're muted, Elliot. Hey, everybody, we will be back here live in five minutes. See you guys then. <laughs>
dinosaurs that live with me that are two Dobermans, and they decided to attack an animal in my backyard. I had to go deal with it. But we are back, so where were we? DM, did you get that um, message? Okay. Thank you. I think we were uh, deciding Frederick and... Um, uh, uh, what is your name? That's with a D. <laughs> Dane, Dane. The variant. Uh, <laughs> we're going to tend to the lady's wounds, try to keep her alive as long as possible. Um, we have a uh, goblin we really don't need anymore. I mean, I guess we could, he could lead us where we need to go. Never mind, we can keep him alive. Uh, Tetsuo was talking about the magic item. I'm going to press the invitation, the lady. Um, and hopefully that'll clean her off. Press the digitation? Yeah. With an ill rigor? I should. Be. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm spell. I'm a spellcaster ill rigor. I think I have that one. Don't is I? that is that part of the spells for ill rigor? I don't know. I, don't think I have it on there, so. I don't, think. <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe look it up for me. Let me know. Yes or no? I'm not really sure, yeah. honestly. I don't. I was thinking. My Ilgriger, I ran. Just let me know. Okay, so Solita says that they're gonna, you're gonna have to use port, part of your purified water because she does not recommend using the swamp water. Uh, so that's uh, there. Uh, who is checking out the goblin boss? You got uh, Solita. Oh, okay. Who's tending to Solita? No, no. Who's tending to uh, Silver Tusk? Dane. That'd be me. All right, Dane. All right, so Dane alone is tending? Um, and Diego. Dane and Diego. Okay. So you two are going to take care of Silver Tusk with Salida. Whoop. Whoop. All right. Uh, Friedrich, what are you doing? Resting. Resting. Okay. Uh, Arizel, what are you doing? I will, uh, either assist with the goblin or i will pick one uh yeah i'll assist with the goblin since everybody else walked away from it uh okay. the bear is holding the goblin in check yeah the bear is sitting yeah so you, you notice that the goblin's kind of looking up and then the bear is just staring at him you also have diego standing there uh tetsuo you still over at the goblin boss uh yes as an archaeologist i would be drawn to the um to the, trying to figure out what this item is or how I can Absolutely. achieve it. Okay, so anybody else? So, Arizel, you're with the goblin. Diego, you're with the goblin? No, actually, I, I am um, I am tending to a silver tusk now. Are you proficient in medicine? Um, I am... Uh, I'm not proficient in medicine, uh, but um, I have magical lay on hands, which I don't think actually... That's right, yeah, I sure. did... That you guys have a total of 16 gallons of water. Uh, you know that you need to... Each party member has to drink at least two gallons of fresh water a day. 
that leaves us four gallons extra at the moment. Oh, no, oh, sorry. Scratch that. Two gallons extra. Because of Salida. Is it uh, raining right that's now? Still, that's still four. That's still four. Sorry. My mouth is wrong. We still have four gallons of water. Um, You said two gallons a day per person? Mm-hmm. Already was six, so that would be uh, 12 gallons. So we still have four gallons extra right now of water we could use to clean um, silver tusk if we need to. So there you go. Oh, I, I do have a rain catcher. That's right. I couldn't find uh, couldn't find the meshes that I had buying it, but I, I have one in my inventory. So I do have one rain catcher. Well, if it doesn't rain, maybe tonight at camp we can uh, boil some of this water in the river here for we can have more water to drink. There's four gallons between us. All might not last very long. 16 gallons between us right now. Yeah. yeah. Four but gallons extra. Oh. <clears throat> we have enough for right now in this situation. Worry about, we can worry about this in the morning when we wake up. All right. So you guys wish to use the purified water uh, to go ahead and try to tend to Silver Tusk. Yeah. Okay. So who is so it's going to be Friedrich and Dane attending to uh, Silver Tusk. Go ahead and give me a medicine check Friedrich with advantage because Dane is assisting you. I have the higher medicine check and I would take over. Go ahead. Alright. Okay. So you uh, go ahead and you start cleaning off her wound and it does seem to uh, serve her well. Her She starts saying, uh, breathing a little bit easier, she says, thank you. Uh, she's still obviously in pain, but uh, she seems to be doing a little bit better as you cleaned out the wound. You now notice that there is the actual wound does not seem very bad. In fact, many of you have gotten them that are much less serious than this. However, you can see that it's there's a smell to it, and you see the black coming out the side of the veins from this wound seem to be spreading further and further. Uh, you would say. She will probably, at the rate of spread, uh, she's probably good for at least the next week, but she will degrade significantly over time. Okay, so now we go to uh, Tetsuo. Um, I'm going to say that as Salida sees you both tending to her, she moves up to Tetsuo and she says, uh, Tetsuo, what do we have here? Well, I kind of froze him in place, but I'm getting, I'm detecting magic from that. I, I believe it's the staff he has in his hand, correct? Uh, you see there is a, mm, I believe it's a dagger. Let me double check. Ugh. I'm detecting magic from uh, something on him and I could be... Maybe one of your people's artifacts, or who knows, but I would. Um, she takes a look. Um, let's see how you do, Slita. Hmm. Um,. She she brings it's a it's a da, uh well in her hand is very large goblin um about your stature but it looks like a short sword almost uh it has a wicked curved hilt and you see it blows a glows like a slight green to the edge of it and it seems to be gripping it by the pommel of it uh and there seems to be some kind of figure on it at the pommel, but you can't really tell as it's encased in ice currently. Uh, she says, very interesting. And it seems to be of some kind of magical nature. Would you mind if I took that and looked over it? 
Uh, so the it's still frozen in the guy's hand, or mm -hmm. okay. yep, he is frozen solid. Okay. Yes, um, maybe when it defrosts, or if there was a way we can get it out of his hand, I could take a better look at it. Uh, she says. Indeed, you have a plan for getting it out of his hand. You did a pretty good job here. I, um... I... I've never stuck around long uh -huh. enough to see how long it takes to defrost, I'll be honest <laughs> with you. So, uh, my main worry is, is looking at it. I don't want to just grab it because it could be cursed. Uh, it is a goblin and it, I don't even know what kind of weapons they have. Um... Um, Slita. She says, I am not familiar with this tribe. Uh, she looks it up and she says, I believe this is the, this is the fire ant tribe. Uh, you can tell by their headdresses. Uh, I typically have not run into them in this area before. They are more, uh, congregated south west of this location along a tributary just north of uh, 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 the established camp where Miss Silvertusk was going. Can I hear this conversation? Um, it depends. This is kind of all happening simultaneously. Uh, give me a perception check. No. Nope. <laughs> you're, I rolled you're, an eight, by the way. Yeah, you're rolling eight, guys. So he's you're kind of busy with what you're doing with Diego and this goblin and the bear. Uh, she says, well, what do you think is the best course? Well, Tetsuo. if we can't get it, um, I would like for nobody else to be able to get it. To be honest, uh, these were bad people. It probably is not a weapon that could be useful. Salida grabs hands. your arm and looks you in the eyes. You have a great destiny, Tetsuo, and you need to start asking, acting like it. The Night Mother wishes it so. Make a decision. I walk over and I'm gonna try to kick it, like break its hand since it's frozen. I'm gonna just try to, I'm gonna use all of my strength, I don't have no strength, to try to yank it off. To okay. Try to get the weapon. Give me an athletics check. Um, coming up. Athletics. Hold on, sorry. That's cool. That is a four. So you reach to kick it. You reach to kick it, and when you do, your magic, you've seen what your magic does, and there's a reason you don't stick around. It's because you turn people into frozen biscuits. So, um, it just, wham, snaps. The, the, it snaps off? Nope, you hear a snap and a slight crack happens by the wrist. Salida so walks up to you, and she grabs and she goes, you're not very athletic, and your skills lay in a different location. Perhaps you should think about it. And she seems a bit disappointed for a minute. Oh, she was disappointed. Okay. Um, all right, so we're going to move on down to, to be thinking. So what I want you to do, Tetsuo, is I'm going to give you another chance at this at the end of this. I want you to be thinking about how would Tetsuo deal with this situation think about it and i'll get back to you when we're when we come back around all right diego arizel and bear uh bear is standing over the goblin he's looking up at you a little bit defiantly and she goes he goes ah so you 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 killing me uh diego looks over to arizel uh he looks at the goblin uh kind of stows away his weapons and um uh, pulls out a uh, hand axe, kind of uh, does a little toss to himself, catches it, 
and then looks at Arizel and goes, and kind of like, over his shoulder for an aside for a second. Yep, I will uh, join you. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Um, are you better at persuasion or intimidation? Uh, it just depends on how I feel that day, but uh, I can muster both. I um, I'm slightly better at intimidation, but I also can go both ways. If you want to be good cop or bad cop, how do you feel? Uh, Sorry, I was checking something on a different page, and you caught me off guard, but I uh, can do or something on a different page, and you caught me off uh, guard. Persuasion I... or intimidation. Both pretty I, uh, it, It's a plus seven on both. <laughs> right. well, I only have the proficiency in intimidation not persuasion <laughs> so mitigating, mitigating. all right it seems like um you're a lot more uh how should i say intimidating you're a more commanding presence than you were when i met you there's something about it i can't put my finger on it i'll take point on this one and you provide me with backup one i can do that so Diego will uh, move back up here and kind of crouch down to eye level with this goblin. All right. Little, um, it looks back. Little, it's Batiri, isn't it? That's what they call you. Uh, it looks up and in broken common. It says, we are Batiri. What is your name? He looks very confused, like that he does not understand the concept of individuality. Oh. Do they refer to you as one or another? As a brother? Or perhaps as your father's name? Um. They call me Toadstabber. Toadstabber. Listen, Toadstabber, are you... Surprise at my knowledge of Yelyark. When you say that name, he his eyes. Well, let's see if you. you know, his eyes kind of go wide, and he goes, "I don't know what you're talking about." Insight check. <laughs> Give me an insight check. We're both. We're both doing that one with advantage. All right. Who's, who's doing it? Me or him? Um, you can go ahead. You sure? <laughs> you go ahead. All right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. It's easy to tell that he is very, he knows exactly what you're talking about, and he's very surprised that you know that name. Dia look, looks over his shoulder and uh, sees Arizel's expression like BS, kind of nods. <laughs> Yeah. And it goes back to him. I find that very hard to believe. No, yeah. you know about Yellow Yark, and I want to know much more about it. The reason that I know about it is because a little kobold told me that Batiri know all about it. And you know what happened to that little kobold? He was let go and lived his long and happy life? That's exactly right. In fact, he was the only one to do so. We killed the rest of his comrades. Now, I don't want that for you, but I can't say the same for this guy over here. He's kind of cross right now that he caught you in a lie. He's giving me the eye like he wants to talk right now, and I'm gonna let him chat with you for a second, but I want what's best for you. You have to understand that. You you, you tell us what we want to know, and and we're going to let you get out of here with your life. How does that sound? He 
he sits there and he kind of looks at you for a second and then he glances over at Arizel. Arizel, what do you look like right now? Well, Arizel is, um, <clears throat> he's standing over just looking very, this, this most ominous eyes he could pull up muster. Um, and he just keeps kind of like low bursting fireballs out of his hand, just, just playing with fire pretty much. Okay. And then just looking at him in just the evilest way. All right, do you want to say anything to him? Um, I say, Diego, we can get all the information out of him at once and uh, bring him with us. He doesn't quite, he's small. He doesn't quite need his legs or his arms uh, to make it there. That's a okay. good point. You don't need those, do you? Okay, go ahead and roll me a pick intimidation or persuasion, whichever one of you wants to do it, with advantage. That's DC that's is going to be 18. That's you, Arizel. Oh, yeah. Uh, intimidation all day. Ah! Ah! 17. He, 17. he says... He looks up at you, and it looks for a second like he's going to say something. Actually, let's see. He says, "Okay, I I make deal. Uh, what?" What is it exactly you want to know? There's Toad Stabatel. There's a treasure in Yell Yark, and we want it. We want all of it. You want to know about treasure? That it? What else is there to know? And how to get there. What's that? How to get there would be helpful as well. Oh, of course. That goes without saying. Come on, don't, uh, don't uh, be rude. Little bit, little bit teary. Toadstabber knows that much. Um, he says so. Agreement is, I tell you about it, the treasure, what I know about treasure, and how to get to Yilyark, and you let me go and take what i want out of that box uh, and he points over to there seems to be like a uh crate of some kind most likely it came from the uh canoe you did notice when you guys arrived initially the goblins all seemed to be kind of congregating around this area going through some stuff but you really haven't checked the boxes yet i say listen uh toad step Correct. Don't stop, yes. I don't. My friend here doesn't want to kill you. I could kill you either way. It does not bother me. Uh, the deal is, you tell us the information that we want to know, all of the information we want to know, and then we probably won't kill you. And I cast suggestion as I say this. Nice. Good shit. <laughs> That's a good one. Come from a base character. All right, wisdom saving throw. What's your DC? Uh, spell save DC is thirteen right now. He looks at you and says, "For a second, his eyes go a little, um, a little uh, like lidded, and then he kind of shakes his head and looks up at you, and goes." Do a theva. Uh, anybody here speak Goblinoid? No. Yeah, you have no idea what he just said. And he just looks at you and goes, Toad Stabber never go home to Yalyark again. Toad Stabber must find other tribe. To find other tribe, Toad Stabber must get there and provide tribute. I've been doing this wrong. Wondering why it's so bad. I didn't change the modifier from charisma to intelligence. Maybe from intelligence uh, to charisma. Intelligence, charisma. I'm like, why is it so low? <laughs> so what, what is? It? So give me another roll. As uh, I was about okay. to say, it's a DC. So what's the DC? DC is 15. Sorry, 
It's Still dead. same same conversation. You rolled okay. seventeen. I'm like, why is that dude bad? He, uh, Diego <laughs> smiles wide and grabs a little goblin by his hand, and um, he'll pull out that uh, that hand axe and kind of press into his palm. And um, what what do these goblins use to uh, to, to fight with? Uh, are they uh, arrows? Are they uh, little swords? Or... Um, scattered around, you see a smattering of scimitars and short bows. All right. Little Toad Stabber, do you know how difficult it is to hold a blade without your pinky finger? So just mechanically, you guys have failed on a suggestion and a intimidation and a, uh, and it basically you've tried. Yeah. He, so he says, I can never go home. I must find other tribe. With nothing off in woods, I am good as dead anyways. I will tell you treasure, and I will tell you how get there. But you might as well just kill me because I will be dead anyways. What's in the box? What's in the box? Uh, you don't know. <laughs> okay, well, if he's gonna tell us the information, those are the questions we ask. That's the information we want to know. But he wants something out of the box. What if you go look at the box? I'll go check the box. How about you that? can, as you go to leave, he says, deal is no looking in box. Mm. He said you get one thing out of the box, correct? Can, can I hear all this going down? No. Nope. Oh, okay. give me perception checks. Because you're kind of still over there. Well, here's the thing. You can, but if you do that, you're interrupting your chance to, at this point, to get that dagger or short sword, excuse me. I am focused on what I, I've, de I've detected That's magic. Good. I know what's around, but I'm not with you guys. So I am focused on what's going on. I don't know your conversation about the box. Okay, so guys, make your decision. Do you want to go ahead and... So the deal is, he goes and gets something out the box. Get... His clarification is he gets to get what he needs out of the box. And he will give you the information on how to get there. And he will also give you... He will tell you about the treasure he knows about at the camp. Diego fair enough. I think it's a fair deal. He says... He kind of gets to his feet with his, with his uh, hands, which are bound he offers them up Diego will uh, cut them open he goes on and he goes <clears throat> it, you travel three days uh, down up river you come to a fork you'll notice there are uh, this symbol and he shows you it looks like a uh, like a, a, a carving of an ant, but it's very stylized, very Incan, very Mayan. He says, you follow tributary that looks like this, you pass, uh, follow the signs, and you'll be able to get, get there. That's for treasure. Big boss, she have dagger. Um, it's twin of that one, and points to the one over uh, points to the frozen statue that Tetsuo seems to be on right now. Uh, she also has icon of Iron God. Uh, worth a lot of money, a uh, lot of food, worth a lot of jewels, worth many shiny things. But they say it uh, bring God to life. That is all I know. She wears it around her neck. Mm. Well, very useful. I will insight check him to see if that's all he knows. Okay. At advantage, I'm also paying close attention. I okay. not, not a lot. It does. You um, he seems to be telling you what he knows. I rolled a five, by the way. Yes. Yeah, I know. Uh, no, I'm saying it for the people yeah. watching. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. For the stream. Yep. Um. So yeah. Um. Okay. I step aside to let him go towards the box. He kind of looks at you, looks at Diego, he looks at the bear, kind of walks over, opens up the box. Uh, he kind of st stumps in, his tiny little legs going out. 
he comes back with what appears to be several rations, um, some salve, some incense, and an additional rain catcher. He loads it in, kind of looks at you, heads towards the canoe, puts his I, uh, stuff in. I, uh, I, I look at Diego and go, I'm not letting him live. <laughs> puts his stuff in the canoe. Not leaving uh, I attack him. Okay. No, 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 no. Literally kill him. Uh, you go to kill him? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm no, no, hold on now. Do you... Okay, hold on a second. So, Amun goes to kill him. What are you going to do to interject? You watch as, Amun, what attack are you going to be doing? Uh, excuse me, Arizel. How are you going to be doing this? I am going to... What do I have right now? Yeah, I'm going to make two whip attacks at him. All right, so you watch as uh, Arizel like notices his eyes and he goes to whack. How do you intercede in this? I'm, I'm grabbing Arizel by the hand. Okay, so it's going to be... So it's going to be a test of speed to see if you can get your arm out to grab his arm. So Go ahead and give me a, an, a, an acrobatics check, both acrobatics? of you. Acrobatics? Okay. <laughs> I rolled a five. Cool. Damn, Arizo. So as Arizel, you go back. This this motherfucker ain't fucking leaving. You, and you go to whip at him. A strong hand comes and grabs your arm as you reach back. Give me a, a, a opposing athletics checks. I rolled a seventeen. He rolled a twelve. <laughs> So, give me a give me your first two whip attacks at disadvantage. Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, give me the damage on that first one. Ten. Okay. As this goblin joes to jump into this canoe, tell me as you f how you fucking kill him. Oh yeah. So the first one, I'm pulling my hand free, and I kind of there's only one attack that Matt goes. Well, I know, but I'm saying I rolled two, so I'm just yeah. role playing that one of okay. them misses. And I look at Diego and I say, "We need that material." As I slip back and just the end of the, the whip hits him in the back of the head as a burst into flames. Yeah, and he just, you watch as he starts screaming and just goes to run into the water as his head is on fire, and then he just falls down face down with just survival gear that he was trying to escape with. Whoa, what the hell? Yeah, I... you guys, you guys are sitting there, and all of a sudden, you guys, it's like, you kind of like working with, uh, with Silver Tusk, and you just... Ah! As he runs by on fire, you see Diego and uh, Arizel locked eye to eye. Go ahead, give me this conversation. What happens? Diego gets right up in his grill. He is breathing on his face, just like we had an arrangement. With a goblin. I, I don't care if it was a fucking goblinoid. We had a deal. This is not how these things are done. We, well. we, we agreed on this, and you went back on that deal. Poor form. Listen. Dishonorable. Uh, I thought said that. I was an honorable man. <laughs> <laughs> so look, Diego, we're here to survive. That goblin was going to take rations that we need to commit to, to, to do our mission to survive. I never want to see kill a man from his back again. That was not a man. Okay, so you all kind of see this. They, are you guys kind of like in each other's face, having this conversation? You see it. I mean, unless I'm you smiling. I'm just yeah. smiling. <laughs> so talking. you two see this like it's brief confrontation. You saw what happened. You see them just like intensely staring at each other. I would say everyone, including C uh, Salida, notices this. Salida kind of backs up and looks around. Does anybody want to intercede? Uh, Dane, like, since the goblin would have run pretty close to him, he's gonna, like, look. Can he tell that the goblin was carrying a water catcher? Can you? Uh, yeah, you can see he has a water. Yeah, you see all the stuff he has. 
Awesome. He's just gonna shrug off the flaming dead thing and go collect the fucking water rain catcher from it. Okay. Diego will break eye contact to glare at you as you are walking over to start just grab loot from this recently dead body. Okay. All right, so we have a very uh, dead goblin. If if uh, Diego looks at Dane like he's upset about this, you know, retrieving the stuff, I wasn't gonna let him take the canoe. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I wasn't going to take let him take the canoe either. I was gonna <laughs> leave with his life. We've been here a day, and the jungle has turned you both into savages. Nah, the jungle is for savages. If you can't live with the savagery, go back to your city, sir. And then he returns back to curing the, or attempting to cure the wound on the ally. Yeah, I would say that uh, for mechanical stake, it's taking you that role. You this, you guys are kind of sitting there just tending to her, uh, and that's the cumulative uh, thing. Okay, so we go back up to Tetsuo. Uh, so you had a minute. What is your plan? Um. So the I the, the he's frozen the ground everything around him and the like right there where he was where the fireball or ice ball went off is completely frozen. Yeah, it's like a crater of ice. Like all the trees in the areas, all that is frozen. Yeah, it's a all right big what, frozen solid. When I kicked him, I examined the crack and I noticed that he was pretty much frozen solid. If I was able to kick him and him crack like that, so, mm -hmm. um. I really don't have power over my power. Uh, one thing I can do, though, from my bloodline um, is I'll I will uh, stand there and uh, I'll reach down and put my hand on the ground, start to shake it as hard as I can the ground, and uh, try to crack, start cracking the ice, and maybe even him. And if it starts working at all, I was going to reach back with my whip and try to whip it if it started cracking to see if it would break um roll, roll me a d100 and uh yeah and i will also I, i'm going to do that but also one thing i can do is i can burn my sorcery points to do it twice in a row with the can well it's a cantrip so never mind um but yeah d100 let Go me ahead. get there sorry yep. Ninety three. I rolled a 93. Okay. Um, as you place your arm hand to the ground and you push out this wave, um, you feel the ground shake very minorly and you see it shake. Go ahead and give me your whip attack. Okay. It's just a basic With advantage. Whip. It's just the basic whip. Um, oh, let me click whip. It's not much damage there. Um, did it roll? With yeah. The, I didn't. I, I'm it, sorry. There's too many. It screens. rolled with advantage. You got. Hold on. You rolled with advantage. You got a 25. You got a nat 20. Oh, I got nat 20 on it. Oh, nice. Go ahead I'm sorry. And roll me damage. Me so, <laughs> so. Okay. So go ahead. <clears throat> As you do this, you see the ground start. All of you kind of feel a little bit of shaking, and the air all around you gets noticeably cooler. All of you snap your head instinctively to look towards Tetsuo, who is touching the ground. He raises up, puts his whip, and you guys watch as Frost pulls from the ground where it's shaking, covers him, and as he whips out, you watch as what a it's a ghostly image of a serpent, black as night, shoot down his arm, or travel across his rip, and you watch as the hand on this creature that is frozen solid explode into a thousand pieces as uh, Tetsuo's eyes glow a bright purple and you hear a roar that shatters the whole body. All of you notice it drops 30 degrees immediately. Salida backs up, eyes wide, and drops to her knees, prostrated in front of Tetsuo. Whoa. And starts mumbling something. 
I, uh, I look you, over Eddie? before <laughs> anything happens. I look over at her, and I, um, I, I say, uh, never mind. What an uh, check. Okay, so Tetsuo, you're not here right now. Okay. All of you watch as Tetsuo's face turns to all of you, eyes glowing, and just utters something in who here speaks Draconic? Right here. Okay, this is what I utter. Uh, you, you're the only one who you, can hear No, no, this. no, Tetsuo, Tetsuo. Okay, sorry. You're not here. You don't know what you're saying. Uh, so that's the thing. Like right now, you're to give it. You're you're not in control of yourself at this moment. Okay. Okay. You hear very broken. It's almost like uh, the difference between like old English and new modern English. It's an ancient words coming out of this, out of Tetsuo's mouth. It's kind of broken. You don't really understand it, but you can tell it's kind of like draconic and it just says a phrase roll me an intelligence check diego you manage to remember you managed to remember three of six words that get said you would have to go somewhere who can understand this language but you are not familiar with it all of you watch as the purple light fades and Tetsuo, you come back to being and you look, oh, there's the dagger, you did it. You look, the rest of the party is just staring at you. Who said they wanted to do an insight check? I did. <laughs> Everybody? Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, okay. He's gonna drop what he's doing and dive roll the fuck away and draw a bow and an arrow. I mean, yeah, I heard, I heard something in Draconic. I saw this whole thing come down. I'm also very interested in this. Okay, so everybody give me insight checks, DC 25. Oh, why did I even roll? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, literally, I literally can't do that high. Yeah, I can't either, so never mind. Did you draw a There's weapon no on point. me? I did, yeah. No point, I rolled one there. Yeah, all of you don't know what the heck just happened, but you, I would say even, I would say Dane, you could tell, uh, you tell that something happened, and then Tetsuo seems like there was a break in time, and Tetsuo looks exactly like he was before he made the attack. That's all you can tell. The rest of you, you just saw that shit, and you know what the fuck is going on. As for those three words, will you let me know what those were, or...? Uh, you know three words. You don't. I cannot tell, tell you what they were because uh, I don't have the language. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not Tolkien here. I can't come up with whole languages by myself. But what, what do they mean in common? <laughs> you don't know. Oh. Okay. You would have to talk with basically mechanically. You're gonna have to talk to somebody who speaks the language. Okay. I can only. I can only remember what three of them you, mean in Draconic. You identified what that there were three words that you can remember. Gotcha. Okay, no so animal. as I don't really know what anything that just happened, I'm going to walk over to pay, I'm not paying attention to anybody really. Um and I'm going to walk over to retrieve the item. Yeah, so you pick up the dagger or the short sword, excuse me. Uh like I said, it was it's a very wicked looking short sword. It has several like serrated edges on the side and at the end you see what appears to be a very stylized scorpion. Uh, with a sting stinger curled up to where you would grip it. Does it okay? Uh, with my archaeological ar ar uh, knowledge, does it look like it might have been made by the same people who put the serpent on my whip? So go ahead and tell me what the archaeologist uh, thing is. Uh, when I walk in the buildings or anything, I could always identify who made them, mostly, oh. but with uh, tombs and buildings and stuff. Does that include the stuff in the tombs and buildings? Uh, let me just go ahead and throw it up for you real quick. Okay. Uh, I believe the archaeology. I don't think it does include the stuff, though. It doesn't. I'm pretty sure. Well, but... you can. You have a general understanding of the people that made buildings and stuff like that. I will say this: Why don't you give me a history check with advantage? DC is going to be. 
Oh, you can determine the monetary value of art objects more than a century old. Okay. Uh, this would be a... This is a probably about 500 years old, uh, give or take a century. Uh, and you can tell that it is has Chilton influences, but is not Chilton. Uh, you can also see that it is very expensive. Um, I'm going to hold on to it to identify it later uh, while we're camping or whatnot. Okay, so all of you watch as Tetsuo walks over, picks up the dagger, kind of looks at it for a second, and put, puts it in the bag, and kind of looks back at you. I see Dane with his bow and arrow drawn, and I'm like, whoa, what What are you... What? Why are you pointing that at me? Uh, when you turn around and are not glowing from the eyes, Dane loses the tension on the arrow. Um, do you not know what happened? You just caused the entire jungle to cool down. And your eyes were glowing? Are you okay? I believe that... Uh... I don't recall much of what happens, but usually when we battle, it's it's happened every time since I've been here in Schultz. Uh, and it's been weird every time. We've been intending. I think I speak for everyone when we're very curious about what is happening to you. I am too. I look over at Selena. Selena, what are you doing? Come get up. Come here. Uh, Selena kind of snaps up for a second and she goes, oh, uh, forgive me. I... I thought he was going to attack. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, and she gets up and she said, Tetsuo, are you okay? Yes. Later in private, we need to talk. I have, we have nothing to speak about. I would like to know where you went the other night during our watch. Of, of course, absolutely. Anyways, do you need uh, any I, or no, anything? No, I, sh uh, I should, uh, I can go ahead and, how do we camp in here for the evening? I, we would have to talk to the party about that. Guys, let's, let's figure out, oh wait, there's one more thing. Um, can someone check that crate over there where he was digging and see if there's anything else in it? I'm sure it looks like it was uh when i detected magic i detected tests. two origins of magic i don't remember yeah. where the other one was because i've been so focused on this one but i believe it was in the crate nope it was in yeah. uh oh, silver um, silver tusk it okay. was you detected yeah. magic like inside her veins oh okay yeah. yeah i would say that i believe this is just uh lady silver tusk and shago's uh supplies they were traveling with Okay. Looks to be that. Uh, if we are going to rest oh. here for the night, uh, Salida. What? Salida is. Yes. Salida walks off into the woods. So, we still don't know what happened to Shogo. He. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the goblin informed us that he was taken south to their goblin camp. Uh, he is to be a sacrifice of some sort. I see. Is that as the same positioning as this Yelyark? That's three days upriver. Mm -hmm. Yes. Should be the same spot. Good. It sounds to me. Well, then we are torn. We cannot leave Lady Silver Tusk in this condition. Uh, Lady Silver Tusk will last. She will make it through several days in this particular shape before her wound overcomes her. My father died, and he was of a great constitution, within barely a few days. And she came through here on her own, was not uh, under the great aid of the Flaming Fist. I fear she has but a day, if even, if we can cure her of this. Time is of the essence. Uh, Dane actually, like, we did checks. She has, like, a week to live. I don't believe you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
So <laughs> it's his character saying that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. I, I just don't know how to roleplay that. Just pure disbelief. All right, we want to go down that path. <laughs> um, I believe she will last for at least a week, sir. I understand your father had a different circumstance and possibly a different wound, but she seems very strong. I believe we should camp here for the night and then take care of... Or Friedrich should have understand or at least do whatever it is he does to solve this particular problem. Uh, and then Dane is going to walk away so that Friedrich can study her and look inside the fucking box. <laughs> he is strong for... Okay, you look inside... Oh, go ahead, continue. No, she is strong. <laughs> um... You look inside the box, roll me an investigation check. Let's see how lucky y'all get. Okay, so... It balanced on 20 there for a second. <laughs> it's a mimic. Right, is that what they're called? Gosh, it'd be awful. I'd be so sad. <laughs> Hold on. Erp, that's not what I wanted to do. Did my whisper go through to him? Yes. Hi, life! Utilize the tools I've given. Okay. Uh, you find, um, approximately <clears throat> well a lot of this stuff has been damaged and looks like it's been like eaten as the Bateri were going through the stuff uh you find what appears to be five rations um a <clears throat> uh some uh five rations two incense and seven salve uh you also see that there is just an assortment of uh, like a short sword, a yakwa, and a shield. Anything special about? Okay, I'm gonna take because the fucking birds stole my goddamn rations before. I'm just gonna put all this stuff into my pack. Okay. Uh, except the short sword and the yakwa, because I already have fucking two of those. If, if, excuse me, I don't mean to speak up, but if we're going to stay here, we should get rid of all the corpses, and there's blood all over the place, and it's going to attract a lot of, uh, maybe, maybe we get in the canoe, it's still daylight, and go down the river a little bit, then camp. Um, where is that guide? Uh, until she returns, I believe that's a wise idea. We could float these corpses up the river, if, if that would be sufficient for you. As long as it's not the way we're going, it could be a bait. Oh, it's definitely gonna. I mean, yeah, we're going fucking down. River. Well, no, the river flows out to the ocean, so it's away from us. We're going up river, so it would go away from us. That's that's a good idea. I think I don't. Uh, Dane is going to enlist the help of his bear and anyone who else else would like to go move all the corpses into the river throw them out into the river so they fucking go away. Okay. How many people are assisting in this? Uh, I would like to assist, but just for the first body to see what happens when we throw it in in case there's any types of piranhas or crocodiles that are going to jump up and uh, before we start chumming all the waters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, going to be piranhas. And is the river moving <laughs> fast or is it like a slow river? It's a very slow, yeah. lazy river. Yeah, it's it's a swamp. It's well, it's a it's a jungle river. If you've seen the Amazon, it's just it looks almost like a lake in some places, but it's very slow moving water. Uh, all right, so you guys take the first goblin, chuck him in. He starts floating very slowly away from the direction that you are traveling. So down river, towards Port Nanzaru. Right, I I am willing to help him out with all of the endeavors of getting rid of the body. Okay. Bodies. Okay, so it takes you guys. Um, how who's helping? I'll help you, Paul. All right, Arizel, Tatsuo, and Dane. Free, uh, you guys are throwing those bodies in the river. Let's see, roll me a 1d20. All of us, 
No, just one of you. Uh, go ahead and Dane, roll me a 1d20. <laughs> Alright, Dane's not allowed to roll anymore My Dane's fucking white rolls are gonna suck today. Three. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Friedrich, I haven't heard from you. What are you doing while these people are... doing all this? Uh, Friedrich is mostly, uh, attending to Lady Silvertusk in any way that he can. Uh, do you want to have a conversation with her or anything? Um, I don't know. I, I don't, Friedrich isn't very uh, familiar with Lady Silvertusk, right? No. We all uh, kind of assumed you'd be studying the wounds, trying to figure out the... Well, uh, let's see what he's doing. Uh, so she looks up at you and she says, Don't, don't see many dwarfs in this land, at least not the... Al Non-albino ones. Albino or uh, dwarves, you say? Yes. <laughs> they... They heard at a bar. There's a... They look like you, but... No, no coloring. Mm, very fascinating. Well... I am not from these parts, and I have not yet run into any other dwarves. Uh, perhaps when I do, they will recognize me as a brother. Just as the tours from my homeland recognize each other as brothers, despite being of different kingdoms. What is your name, Brother Dwarf? The name is Friedrich. She I looks... Have... Go ahead. I have, I have come in search of some friends. And that is what has brought me to this jungle. And you are Lady Silvertusk. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, Lady Silvertusk of... Undril Silvertusk of... The... Let me double check, I got her bio right here. Uh, Order of the Gauntlet. Yeah. I met your friends on the trip over here. Uh, originally, they were going to... Uh, Help me deliver this packet of dispatches to my superiors to compare Nile to Commander Breakbone. I was led to believe I could simply buy a horse in the city and ride to camp, but I see that it's not going to happen. I look for any expedition heading up the river Sosnia, points like nods to the river. To the west? The southwest, yes. Uh, we have established two good camps, strong camps, in order to fight the uh, ongoing incursions of the undead. We will break them. My compatriots are stalwarts and good defenders, and I was supposed to bring reinforcements, but we are having a little bit of recruitment issues, and she coughs again. She says, well, you have found a friend in me, Frederick, for helping. Tell me, Friend Friedrich, am I going to die? Well, that is not certain of any of us, especially out here in the jungle. But Jane, Dane seems quite confident that he thinks you have a good bit of time. It seems that Diego, however, has seen ailments such as this and isn't so confident himself. Personally, I trust in the power of the gods, and I believe that they will keep you alive long enough for us to rid you of your ailments. Torm willing. Uh, Torm willing. I will... <clears throat> I will make it there, but if not... And she takes out a... Like a packet of dispatch of uh, letters that are sealed, um, and she says... Give these to Com uh, Commander Breakron at camp. He will need them. I will hold on to these only until you've recovered your health. Do not forfeit your life before it is gone. I won't fight, my friend. Torm's blessing is not left me yet, but I need to rest. It was good talking to you, Friedrich. And good talking to you. And she closes her eyes. All right, so 
Um, you guys are going in, uh, dumping the bodies in right. the river, and uh, <clears throat> out comes Salida of the woods, and let's see what she got. Oh, Baby we got back. Mm -hmm. Could I potentially, while we're doing that, um, give some salve to uh, Silver Tusk and like apply it to her, or give it to Fedric to apply to her, so she doesn't get attacked? I'm, uh, I'm giving I would us say... some salve for her. Yeah, I would say go ahead and um, keep in mind you guys are going to have to take care of uh, her. That's a good point. Um, so go ahead and get rid of one of your salves. I would say that while they're having the conversation, you go ahead and apply the salve, if that's okay with you, Friedrich. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Salida so comes back with what appears to be a very rotting fruit, and she says, This area is sparse. I can only guess that the... Bateri picked it clean before we got here. I'm sorry, all I got is this, and hands up like a rotten pomegranate. Do you think it would be wise if we move uh, in downstream some? Um, or upstream? Uh, whatever your decision is, Tatua. I believe we should take the, the canoe, uh, drag it a little farther away from this battle. I think we've probably drawn enough attention to ourselves, and uh, we could then there rest for the night. Yeah, that sounds about right. Salida so kind of looks around and she says, um, "Very well, I will assist." She so she takes one. She starts getting ready, taking uh, the items that you discovered in the crate, packing them, placing them into the uh, the uh, canoe, um, and she starts getting ready. Um, you guys just want to load up and head up, head south. Sounds good. Okay. So you guys go ahead and get that done. Um, you're all able to fit inside this canoe. Um, but there's almost no room left. Um, the uh, Salida gets all the stuff in. You manage to load Silver Tusk in there, and you head off down the river. Uh, um, the bear will follow along on the coastline. <laughs> okay. Uh, we can get to that mechanically at a different date because that would be a little bit difficult. Um, but <laughs> we'll see how that works out. Um, <clears throat> Um, so, go, let's see, you guys, uh, load in and you start traveling down, and you see you guys are actually making pretty good speed, without having to travel through the underbrush and cut all this, you're moving markedly faster. Uh, you are going against the current, but the current here is very slow, the river is a lot wider, you actually here seem to be on a small tribu tributary. Um, as you pass uh, the area, you notice um, creatures moving about in the underbrush. You just get glimpses of uh, tails and teeth, a couple of growls as you push on through. Um, but I would say in about two hours, uh, you come to an area that looks like a pretty good beachhead. Um, Salida says, uh, this is probably the best we are going to find uh, unless we want to continue through the evening. Perfect. I think we learned our lesson about doing it, about traveling at night. Okay. Um, indeed. And you... Uh, she says, okay, uh, we shall put the shore here. Uh, you pull up to shore, uh, you find a very low-hanging tree that's wide, that reaches out over the water. Uh, she says, uh, we could probably camp up there, uh, it will be easy enough to get Miss Silver Tusk up there. Is this acceptable? Good. Good. Um, so you guys make your evening um, up in the tree, and we will take a five-minute break. Or, excuse me, ten-minute break. Awesome. Perfect. We'll be back no. in ten right. minutes, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Um, yeah, we'll be right back. Can't wait to see you all again.
five, four, three, two. For the evening uh, in a tree, what are we doing for watches? Dane is going to take third and fourth. I'll take okay. second. Okay. I will take second with Tetsuo. Okay. Who's taking first? I'll take first. All right. Friedrich, uh, you taking one? Friedrich will uh, take last watch with Dane. Okay. All right. So first up, we have who? Uh, before he bets down, Dane's going to use primeval awareness. All right. So what is what are you looking for? Uh, I mean, isn't it? Is it? And we never nailed this down. Is it all of these things? Because you can sense whether the following types of creatures are present within a mile. So that's celestials, aberrations, dragons, elementals, fey, fiend, and undead. I don't know. I didn't look it up. So <laughs> we'll just say, what are you specifically looking for? Um, well, it says all of them, but I'm what did you? Which one are you specifically? Undead. Okay, let's see. Um, you reach out with your awareness and you so listen. Well. You reach out with your awareness, um, listening to the trees, smelling the air. You don't sense any undead. All right. In that case, Dane beds down happily. Okay. Uh, who's first watch? Diego. Okay. Diego by himself. Diego will summon uh, air civilization. Okay. Uh, go ahead and use that spell slot. Um, you hear uh, the crunching as metal as your uh, steed emerges from the woods, hissing and steaming. Uh, Diego will um, sit and telepathically beckon Siv to himself. It moves over to you and nods its head down. Uh, he'll sort of uh, put a, uh, a palm to its cheek. I have not made any attempts at this before, and I apologize for doing so. I am able to give you telepathic commands, but are you able to speak in response, Siv? For a second, there's no answer, and then a metal grating voice that says, All who follow the Lord can speak between each other. You and I are no different. Good to hear. What is it that you wish? I wish no more of this barbarity. If you had any ability to see through my eyes today, the savagery that takes place in this jungle I wish it no more. I want to bring civilization to this untamed wilderness. You and I will conquer all that we see, and we will bring a new world, a good world, a just world, a lawful one. The creature seems to stare at you for a moment, looks out into the jungle, looks at you. That will be difficult here, but we shall conquest. We have much work to do. Indeed. He pats him on the head. You hear like a tss from behind his ear, like a valve opens up. Indeed. All right, he continues watch. Okay. Nothing happens in your watch. Second up, who's up? From behind his ear, like a valve opens up. So you guys get up. <clears throat> you take your positions. Um, Salida also gets up. Uh, she kind of sits at the end of the branch overlooking the water. And staring out into the jungle. Oh, yes. Um... Right quick, Arizal, could I have, could I speak with you for a second? Of course. Do you, something changed about you. You were, you, you're still a wizard. You still know magic? I still know magic, yes. Oh. 
Can you identify anything? I cannot. Hmm. That's such but, a bummer. Well, that's not exactly true. I could find out information for you. I just need something identified. Um. Well, you, I suppose that short sword you acquired today <clears throat> would like to know what properties it makes and, and, and the like. Indeed, that's, uh, this thing's got to be a half a century old and it's been around for a while with such intrigued carvings. I've never came across anything like this. And this is the reason why I'm here is to explore and discover, um, well, I tell you what, um, I see, as I see it right now, there are probably, well, two things you'd probably like to know. That short sword is one, and maybe where your power comes from is two. I, um, I kind of freeze in place. <laughs> nice pun. But, um... Um, uh, right now, I would like for us to maybe focus on the short sword. Um, yeah. I tell you what, I still have a connection to the people that brought me back. Uh, I will look into those things for you. Well, no, just out of, out of, out of, you know, being friendly. Uh, I won't look at the information myself. When, when I get it back. Wait, we'll hold on. Wait, 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 wait. When I'm in battle, do I scare you when I, I guess, I black out? Does this scare oh, you? You don't scare me. No. <laughs> no. No, well, you don't scare me. If you will, um, do me a favor and put looking into who I am on the back burner. Are you sure? Yes. Um... It scares me. Well, if it scares you, wouldn't you want to know uh, more about that? If it's something you want to keep, or if it's something you don't want to keep, I mean... I, uh, I want to keep friends while I'm here. Listen, anything that I find out would be between me and you. Pinky swear. <laughs> I will swear it's upon gods that brought me back. With the bat on the pinky, as I put my pinky out towards you. I'll end my pinky. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. 100%. I'm going to get up and walk away towards uh, Selena. Um, she is staring out into the darkness, and she says, Oh, hello, Tetsuo. Hello, Selena. Are you enjoying this evening? I am enjoying it. Very much. Do you I honestly prefer the jungles. Do you Things see, are simpler out here. Do you see anything out there? Anything to be alarmed of? She looks at you and she says, I have seen much today to be alarmed. Hmm. I was wondering if you can tell me a child story from the locals. They tend to have more knowledge than what uh what most people do do you know any children's stories um involving big doors under mountains i say with intensity she looks at you for a second give me a persuasion check Uh, that's an 11. She says, uh, I don't really remember much of those stories. Uh, uh, I do know an interesting proverb, though. And she goes on to give you just a generic proverb about the river running through your life and stuff like that. It's a good story and all, but obviously not what you were looking for. Yeah. Uh, can I insight her to see if she was intentionally avoiding that, or...? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Nine. 
Nat 20. Nice. Um, as you, she is telling you the story, you can't help but notice several very there's br- she she almost stops halfway through and just stares at you a little bit longer something is definitely there you just can't really discern what at this point uh she seems she's it's very strange she's very difficult to read she is not like a lot of people that you've been she's speaking to when i black out do i scare you no, you do not scare me, Tetsuo. You are... I see many strange and different travelers coming through here. That is good, because not only do I value you as a guide, you I'm valuing you as a friend among us all, and you seem to be one of the most trustworthy people um, that I've come across so far. Even though we mm-hmm. pay you, I value you more than the pay. Tetsuo, where did you get your power from? Uh, not the whip, uh, the ice and the scales. You said you have some kind of bloodline. I'm not 100% sure on what my bloodline is, but I will. I lied to you. I will let you know that now. The power didn't come with the whip. When I was just a child, my earliest memory was hearing about this place. And, uh, well, not this place, but something that would draw me to this place. I didn't know at the time, but I froze a cup that was in my hand and it scared me. The power, honestly, must have been there, but it never happened again my entire life until uh, I came in contact with this whip. That's why I did not want you to touch it. I did not want you to go through what I'm going through. And this, as I show her the scales again protruding through my, like, underneath my shirt and um, are you having this conversation just quietly between you and Salida? Uh, yeah. I mean, we're 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 talking uh quietly. If if uh anyone can hear me, uh, I'm not trying to keep it completely under wraps, but I'm also not trying to broadcast it to the jungle. Like, yeah, you're just having there's a regular, regular quiet jungle yeah. staying alert conversation. We're not trying to bring in any wildlife. Yeah. Okay. So no, let me uh, see something real quick. <laughs> He's just sitting over there by the fire, watch me walk yeah. away, just listening. Yeah, okay, so getting back to your conversation, as you go down to pull your uh, shirt down, you're taken aback. Um, typically, you you know you have your scalage, correct? Um, they, it's like a patch of scales on your body, just slight, slight patches over there. You notice you now have your entire shoulder is covered in scales. Uh, It has expanded. And also, they were a light uh, Captain Planet Blue when you first had. They have turned a darker, almost purplish shade of blue um, there. And they are like, it went for a couple of specks to your entire upper shoulder. Okay, as Uh, I notice the change, I will pull back over, not make a big deal of it, and investigate it more later. I'm... She stops your hand and she says, I wish to see. Okay. I will, I will just, I mean, he's sitting over there watching, but I'll just well, uh, take you, off my shirt. You, you, so you, you look, uh, and it seems like Arizel is talking to his rabbit. <laughs> Well, not talking. He's just whispering something the to the rabbit. I forgot about the yeah, rabbit. Yeah, and he's like, and the rabbit's like, oh, looking back at him. 
Uh, you remove part of your shirt, and she places her hand up on the scales, and she goes, They are cold. I'm cold. She whispers something to you, and she says, it says, you can hear, it says, can you understand me? I hear that. Can you understand yep. me? Yep. Ooh, ooh, yes. What is that language? I've never. She well, sits I back. What she said. Um, when she sits back, I sit back a little bit, too. She goes. Tetsuo, this is. Um, there are things that are happening that I do not understand. You should not be able to speak that language or understand that language. There are things about myself I cannot talk about. It is a private business. I understand that you trust me and I trust you, but I promise you, it, I mean no ill will to you at all. But we cannot discuss this in the open anywhere near the party. Do you understand that? I look back at Israel and I look at the party and I look at her and I go, Yes, I, I do. Let's let's not speak of it around them at all. Actually, look, this is what we will do. I have to, I have to find out more information. It might not happen easily. Do you know what is going on with me? I, I it, what is happening to you cannot be possible. But it is apparently possible. I can go into it because if I am wrong, that would mean. Danger to us, Tolo. Give me a few days, and I will ask you perhaps to assist me in foraging for some food, and we can have a different conversation. Embrace what is happening to you, Tetsuo. Tetsuo thinks about power for a second, as the rest of my watch goes on, and yep. then whatever else is going. I'm sorry, that's it. <clears throat> This one, Master, you wished me to find out what you have asked. I, um, uh, I'm using the message to talk to yeah. thing. I'm not, I'm not okay. talking loud. Alright, so you send me the message and I will write back to you when I can, okay? I mean, no, I mean, just the party. We can, we can... Oh, yeah, yeah. Spell okay. message. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. you are speaking telepathically with this creature. Correct. Okay, yeah. perfect. perfect. Yeah, you don't need to use any spells. Okay. I said yes. I'd like you to gather. I need you to ask the Lord the information that we speak, we seek on this Tetsuo here. I feel like uh, he is hiding it, but he is hungry to find out what makes him what he is. Erizel, you know how this works. I can't just go to the master with no contract. I mean, unless you are asking, and then I'm sure I can pen something up for you. Okay, sorry, then DM, I thought I would ask, find out what a person knows. A contract would be written up for me, and then I would say, all right, I can give you this information, but it's going to cost this. So, to enter in it, so <clears throat> you kind of had this conversation. He says, it is understandable you don't remember parts of your training, Ilrigger, as getting ripped apart for the past six centuries tends to do that. However, to gain information, a deal must be struck. You can work on this one. He seems interested, and if not him, perhaps the lady. Okay, so I have to make the contract now. No, you, you. So here's the thing: you have I'm, to. They have to agree. They they have to say yes. I wish to know. Okay, mechanically, they say yes. I have to wish to know. There's a price for information. Um, dependent on the level of what it is, 
this creature will come back. But you have to have an individual that says, I want to know this. Well, he wants to know about the sword. He wants to know about the sword. Okay, so is that what you want to ask about the sword? Yes. Okay. He says, starting small, I understand. You have remembered your training. Perhaps I can find something for you, master. Give me a day. Perfect. I love you. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> Say it back. Yeah. <laughs> It's okay. I know you love me too, even though you don't <laughs> say it. You never kiss me anymore. <laughs> All right, so we make love. Yeah. Why do you always hit it from the back, Adam? Uh. <laughs> so, um, we Whoa. go ahead. The rest of your session uh, watch goes on uneventful, um, unless you guys want to talk about anything else. Nope. Okay. Third watch. Who's up? That is... uh, that'd be Dane and. Am I the only one doing third watch? Frederick. Yep. Frederick. Frederick. No, Frederick is last watch. I thought. Yep. He's doing last watch. Okay. Uh, so Salida. No, Salida goes to bed. Okay. Uh, before she goes to bed, I want to ask her if she has any herbs, uh, specifically, you know, garlic. Honey, ginger, oregano. Um, I don't particularly carry those, but I can certainly keep my eye out on the way through the woods today. Please do. I will be as well. Very well. Um, and she heads to bed. Okay, let's see. All righty then. Go ahead, and so you're keeping watch. Uh, your passive is 14? 15. I don't know why it's this. Oh, it went up when I leveled a while ago. I'll change it. 15. Okay. Uh, You are sitting over this river um, and kind of just looking out and you notice absolutely nothing. I spend the time conversing and experimenting with different thought exercises with my bear. Okay, the bear just kind of sits there and stares at you in amazed wonderment. He's a fucking bear. <laughs> okay, uh, last... telepathically with the bear. Yeah. <laughs> oh well we can get to that i'll think of something uh all right i'll i'll bring that up i'll write that down as a note <laughs> no worries. what the fuck bear all right uh last watch we get to frederick and frederick you get up and you see that dane is having a conversation with a bear is there anything that you, well, it seems to be thinking very hard at a bear <laughs> uh does, does dane take note of Friedrich as he's like approaching or is he just staring at the bear? Uh Dane, you notice you see Friedrich stir and get up for his watch. Okay. I nod over to him, just generally saying, hey, I'm over here. So it's been a quiet night, has it? At least while I've been sleeping. Have you checked on Lady Silver Tusk at all? I've been keeping an eye out around for a few different herbs, but no, she's due to have a checkup. And let's go check on her. Okay. Uh, you guys go over. Go ahead and um, you go ahead out and you uh, take a check. Go ahead and give me a medicine check with advantage. Yeah. Um, while the wound is clean and normally, what? I it didn't whisper. I don't know why. Never mind. 
Okay. Uh, while the um, I got it the first time. Uh, while the uh, wound is clean, um, you notice that it is not scabbing over or healing. Um, Lady Silver Tusk seems have a little bit of a fitful sleep. Um, you are not exactly sure what's going on, but she is definitely still suffering the effects of this illness, but she does not seem to be in immediate danger. Friedrich, uh, we should have to be the look on the lookout tomorrow for some healing herbs. I don't believe I don't believe you have any on you, do you? Any garlic, honey, oregano? Nothing of the sort. Uh, unfortunately, I am the same. If you see any of these along the way, I would even use some you know, golden steel or golden rod. Either one. I'm not sure what grows out here this deep into the wilderness. Well. Hopefully, when I get my spells from Tyre tomorrow, then perhaps we can cure her completely. Oh, one could hope. Her only chance rests in your god's abilities, sir. And do you have any god stain? You're muted. I do. I worship an elven god, Solinor, the god of hunting, archery, wilderness survival. I'm sure you can see why that's fitting. Yes, you, you seem quite at home out here in the, in the jungles. Mm, I find I can be myself instead of falling to the whimsy of the crowds and trying to vie for people's, you know, whatever that is, that makes you make wanting, I guess would be the word for it. I think what you're probably experiencing is the power struggle between the oppressors and the working class. Oh my fucking dad. Uh, <laughs> power struggle? And is this yeah. more of your belief system, sir? Haven't you Haven't ever you noticed that? that... Well, yeah, it's called Marxism course. Dane digs in his pack and pulls out the pamphlet that he still fucking has. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you noticed that men have a tendency to want to control other men? Haven't you noticed that we all work for our own self-interest instead of for mutual cooperation. Yeah, it is as it is in nature. Very rarely does the bear help a sparrow. Is a man not entitled to the sweat off his own brow? <laughs> Stop quoting Karl Marx, it's not your turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps that is the reason why you prefer the jungle. Because the jungle is governed by natural order, and not through the act of slavery. Now, this I have noticed about this jungle in particular. In the forests back home, that is correct, but here there is an evil that tips that balance. It is far less hospitable for any creature seeking to live throughout the night. And what exactly brings you to the jungle? Well, originally I had come to seek my my good friend. Uh, I lost a bear here, a bear that I had known for quite a long time. It really inspired me to go into the woods uh, and become who I am today. But alas, I believe that she is long dead since I woke up on a ship headed back to the mainland and she was not with me. I came back to search for her, but I do not... I find her spirit seems to have conjured itself into the bear that you see before you, pointing at the mystical markings all over this fucking bear. <laughs> so, then it is your love for your friends that keeps you traveling through this wilderness. Uh, at this point, it is more of a lust for adventure now that I've been at least spiritually reunited with my family. As well, I... 
I noticed you were staring quite intently at your bear. Does it talk to you? Not in the way that you and I speak or communicate, but we touch our consciousnesses. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it gets lonely in the jungle. It does. Well, I have been searching for a friend of myself, and I don't know what has become of him, but I am eager to find out. Uh, Dean has no charisma. I could be your friend. We could be friends together. It is rare to have an elf and a dwarf. <laughs> Nothing like Lord of the Rings. It is very rare to have an elf and a dwarf find, or found a friendship. Forge, forge a friendship. Fuck words. Yes, the, uh, the elves have a way of wanting to keep to themselves. <laughs> In this, we are much aligned. Well... I couldn't imagine traveling this jungle without a bit of friendship. Aww. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say to that besides, yes, we shall be friends and talking friendly stuff. Uh, Dane is going to continue to share some of his backstory and ask questions about uh, Friedrichs for a while. Um, uh, to the end of our thing. Unless okay. there's anything else you want to cover, Frederick. Because uh, this could go on for a while. <laughs> yeah, I think that about does it. Okay. All right. So you guys wake up in the morning, um, <clears throat> and it all star seems to go pretty well you uh silver tusk she seems to be up let's see how she is doing did we gain the benefits of a long rest uh we're going to find out sorry uh all of you do let's see You notice that uh, Miss Silvertusk does not seem to be pretty exhausted this morning. Um, she just says, "I do not feel well," but you know, I um, I feel that I can help at least a little bit today. Uh, shall we go, Frederick? Are you able to do your thing this morning? I, I have prayed to my god, and he has given me a new spell. Okay. Just like that, you can pray to your god, and he just gives you stuff? Clerics, though. That is amazing. The power. The Is power divine. Me? Yes. The power of unity. Devotion. Yes, Frederick. Yes. You speak for yourself. I apologize. <laughs> I keep interrupting. The, um, the power of the gods has always been present on Tyre. You have but okay. to devote yourself to their power, and they will share their power with you. I agree wholeheartedly. So okay, so remove. Sorry, go ahead. All right, so remove curse. Uh, it just doesn't. There's no like conflict back and forth with a spell level at all. It's just so, any curse you can just. It says at your touch, all curses affecting one creature or object end. Oh, yeah. Period. All right. So you walk up and you place your hands on the side of Miss Silver Tusk. And what happens as you remove this curse from her body? Uh, I what does it look like? I assume there's some glowing aura or light that, like, transfers from Friedrich's hands to Silver Tusk and kind of envelops her. 
and slowly causes the uh, the black lines on her body to recede and eventually fade away entirely. Yep. You guys watch as she she her eyes kind of open, and you watch the line black lines that have been crawling up her neck retreat back, and you watch a black viscous fluid pour out of the open wound and then evaporate into air. Lady, how are you feeling? Uh, she blinks and she says, I am doing much better. Thank you. Well, it seems that the gods have blessed us. Indeed. I well, believe it belong to you. And he hands her back the letters. Uh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Torm's blessing upon you. Entire's blessing on you. Okay. Um, all right. So let's see how we do on today's episode of Does Salita Get You Guys Lost? <laughs> we're, on, we're on the water, so she can't get us too lost. I don't think. You'd think so. <laughs> you'd, think, you'd think so, right? It's a straight line. Oh, if is it? Now one, she'll figure it to fuck uh, out. <laughs> no, it, believe it, bo there, it. It's accounted for. Don't worry. I'm sure you there's can creeks, still get lost. Creeks and cricks. Yeah. yeah creeks and cricks. Cricks. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Uh, I wonder what okay. the fishing's like. You can always try to go fishing. Also, um, I think Friedrich would, would mention to the party that they should, um, they should try to go in search of Shogo. Okay. I think that's you, okay. Um, you guys, uh, managed to travel down the river and very easily it's noticeable how you could get lost. Um, there are mangrove swamps. There's portions of this that are very much like a mangrove swamp where there's not a very defined river. Um, during the day, you uh, can see how you could get lost up a tributary thinking that it is the main, uh, the main river. But today, it seems that you actually managed to uh, keep on track. Um, in fact, roll me a 1d20, please. Ooh. Uh, go ahead, Tetsu will roll me a 1d20. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. We all are inspired today. We get seven hit points, guys. Uh, that Ooh, is okay. a 16. And we plus get seven uh, bonus hit points, you're saying? Yep. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh, you yeah. guys travel on through and you seem to have no issues i'm gonna bring you guys where are we at we are at here we are traveling let me zoom in here yeah boop you make it three tiles as you travel down the Woo. river don't forget that's to use, correct don't forget to use the sab guys Yep, everybody use oh. yourself. Yep. Make sure you oh. subtract one for Salida and one for... Uh, did we acquire any more from that box? From we, did. I, we did, and I put them in my inventory. I said it out loud when I did it. Okay, well, then subtract it from that. Yeah, oh. I was going to offer you. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, you guys, again... Uh, pull up to shore for the evening. Um, we're just going to go ahead and roll me just one, roll me three d20s, uh, four d20s. So uh, Arizel, Diego, Dane, and Friedrich, roll me one d20. Okay. That's a uh, 19, 8, and a 7. Okay. Oh, Every somebody... I, I, yep, so somebody get rid of the uh, incense for the evening, um, let's and it. let's yeah. see how much it yeah. rains this evening. 
We got two rain you, traps kicking it, guys, or what? Yep. Yeah, really? So you guys got three rain traps. Oh, nice. Um, remember that you guys, from Dave's explanation to the young man, you can't take your rain trap. You now have three. Um, is there anything anybody wants to talk about that evening? You will not encounter any uh, monsters that evening or interruptions. Um, so, did on the banks the entire time we were traveling, did I may have to see anything that I'm going to start building a healer's kit? Oh, so I'm gonna... go ahead, go ahead and roll me a survival with advantage. Okay, yeah, um, while you are traveling down the river, um, you like look at something, and as you're looking at it, Salida pokes your shoulder and says, um, there is some of the uh, herbs you spoke of. Uh, you have found some uh, ginger uh, on there. So today you got some ginger. Remind me every single um, every single day to uh, try that again. We'll see when you get it done, okay? DC is going to be 15 every single day. Sweet. Okay. All right. So I'm sorry. I, I was thinking something before. There was a, um, yeah, there was no encounters. Anybody would have a conversation with anybody that evening. Good. Diego story. has, um, oh. he's been pretty short, uh, with Arizel for the past day, but does not have a conversation with him. But in any of the conversations that they would have had just throughout the day, it's been pretty like, you know, one or two word responses, leave me alone type stuff. And it's like, your space. Yeah. There we go. Care. Okay. <laughs> We're real packed on this fucking tiny gas. Oh, yeah, you guys are packed. <laughs> You're packed up. It's real awkward. <laughs> it's one of those car rides. Like, you know, when you're with your, you, you know, when you're like hanging out with like on a couple's trip and the couple gets like in a fight and you guys got to drive back and you're just like, Ooh. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just constantly talking about Volo and all the monsters in the guide the whole time. Like, I just keep talking about all different monsters and things you guys don't even care about, like different bones and different types of stone and just weird things that only an archaeologist would even love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. So the next day uh, you get up, everybody. So let's see how she did for food or you guys are going to have to get rid of your rations. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Nice. Uh, yeah, no rations. She able to take a very large, what appears to be bipedal uh, dinosaur, cook it up. Uh, you guys make it through the night. You have breakfast in the morning. You are good. You do not have to consume rations. If we ever get You're... hungry, we can eat the rabbit. Try it. I forgot I about that. the unicorn rabbit. Ooh, I would love to eat that me. rabbit if I were you. He looks sweet, but he is rotten at the core. I wouldn't eat your pet. I know everybody Wait, loves this... pets. Did we bring the unicorn rabbit? Did oh, we yeah. not? It's not leaving. Yeah. <laughs> you, you've seen the rabbit. You've seen the rabbit like yesterday. You haven't seen him today. He's following us down the river, though. You don't know. You normally see him sitting by Arizel or in his pack. Uh, actually, you didn't see him yesterday, and you do not see him this morning. Where is that adorable little mascot character? I don't know. Maybe we've lost him going down the river. I was I very surprised to see him following us at all. Are you it's sure your bear hasn't thing. eaten him? My bear doesn't really eat. He's more of a spiritual animal than a physical one. The bear is not with us any longer, by the way. <laughs> My seed is also dismissed. Okay. Your, your seed is dismissed. Gross. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> That's what I heard. All right. So you guys begin traveling down the river. Go ahead and roll me four D20s. Uh, go ahead, Tetsuo, Arizel, Diego, and Dane. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, wrong Oops. Sorry. Dang it. Three. Twelve and nineteen. All right. So. Three and four. All right. So. Nineteen. It's 12. just past. Um, it's just past noon, uh, and you're slowly moving down this river, 
And as you turn the bend, you see the river kind of uh, narrows. Um, you hear at first what appeared, what you think is must be rapids because there's just a large amount of splashing. But as you turn around, at first you think they're too giant snakes and they seem to be fighting over something uh as you draw closer approximately 300 feet you actually end up seeing that there's much more of them under the surface there seems to be an oval shaped body under the surface and they seem to be tearing what appears to be a juvenile uh tyrannosaurus rex to pieces in the water as you near they both snap their heads up to you bellow and start moving towards you. And this is what they look like. Word. Oh, shit. All right. Salida. Wow. Yeah, uh, Salida says, Row, row with all your might. Go ahead, and who has the highest strength? Diego. Um, <laughs> my, uh, my athletics is uh, with proficiency a six. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me a. Go ahead and give me an athletic a str athletics check, DC thirteen. Straight, so, no advantage. Straight. You, uh, oh no, people! Everybody else is rowing. You get the aid. You yeah. get at advantage. Do I have time to cast guidance? That's a him? that's a twenty three. Thank fuck for advantage. Well done. Uh, yeah, you... you can if you wish. Looks like he doesn't need it. Okay, so you guys, uh, with you, the this paladin in the back, massive arm swell, as you all are pushing, but Diego is doing most of this, and you are guys are able to ground your ship uh, on the shore. Uh, even Silver Tusk jumps out and you start dragging it back on there as these two large creatures move to the shore and start hissing at you uh, as you pull it up onto the bank. Uh, they sit there for about a minute just staring at you uh, with beady black eyes as they then dive down under the water, disappearing. That could have been much worse. Uh, that was an excellent check. <laughs> well, I just had a Valheim flashback. Yeah, pretty much. I was thinking that too. <laughs> Fucking in a rat. What in the nine hells did we just avoid? <sighs> Salida says, "Hey, don't know. They call him Lucnis." <laughs> what a monster. there is another name for them, but. Uh, that is what they call them here. They have killed many a party traveling on the river between, I don't know which is worse, those or the crocodiles. Peculiar. Is it like the um, the sea beast to the, to the north? Does it require some sort of financial tribute? Maybe about Tree Fitty? <laughs> uh, I suppose 350 pounds of your flesh would do that. It is not a being that would. They don't have conversations. So, what are you looking for? I was going to uh, ask. Yeah, um, so basically, ask. I can't wait to look this up. Uh, I'm just undead within six miles of this location. Nope. Okay, so, uh, what were you saying? Uh, Arizal? I was gonna ask, uh, Salida, I was like, well, how long until you think they're gone we can get back on the river? About an hour. I seen them hold their breath for about that long. I would not be willing to chance an ambush if we get back in the water till then. Okay. Well, uh, we can always force them to leave or force them away. We could carry the boat up river a ways. Seems we could. Like... We could certainly portage the boat. Um, That's the word. Do you wish to do that? I think yes. any time lost sitting around would be uh, not good. We should move. Keep moving. Uh, is that the party's wish? We wish to keep moving or shall we forage for food here? and wait it out on the water. It is up to you. Either way. Uh, keep moving. 
I agree with moving. Okay, so uh, yet again, we're going to have the paladin give me an athletics check with advantage. Alrighty. He drops the boat. <laughs> I'm talking about beholders this whole time because it's, it's a 17. <laughs> 17. Yes, you guys manage. Uh, with that, uh, with everybody holding it, um, you guys slip and fall a couple of places. This is a lot more difficult than you thought it was going to be. Uh, it's not just the weight of the canoe and the stuff in the canoe. It's also, it's a freaking canoe and you're in the jungle. So it's uh, Diego lifting. Uh, it's all the three of you lifting and it's uh, Dane and Salida in the front hacking your way through the jungle. Um, you guys get about an hour and you're able to push back onto the river. Um, it's probably a good idea that you waited the hour because very far down the bank, you watch as a some kind of creature goes to walk on. You can see where you went off, and as it does, you see the snapping neck of one of these plesiosaurs grab it and drag it into the ocean as it trips it apart. Salida says, see, about an hour. Uh, I see. All right. So, just for your information, with that break, um, in order for you to make the three, you guys are going to have to travel at a fast pace for the rest of the day. Let's see how Rain does. We can just do two. Ah, let's do fast. Okay. okay. We've had an encounter in a while. Let's do fast. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I love that you... face. Something tells me we're too confident, but let's do it. <laughs> It'll be yeah. fine. Totally fine. Yeah. Um, uh, let's say it's yeah. slow. If everybody else is you, regular, regular. So far. <laughs> All right, regular. so Friedrich, what do you vote? Slow or fast? All right, so act regular or fast? Fast. Fast. Uh, Davis, I mean, Moon is slow. Uh, Diego? Slow. Normal. Uh, Tetsuo? I mean, we're almost... We're almost there, but I am kind of tired from carrying that, so I'm going to have to say at a haste, but uh, if haste. I, I'm in the middle. Okay, right, haste. so haste. Uh, is it, are you haste or normal, Tetsuo? I am, I, I, <clears throat> I'm haste. Haste, okay, and Dane? Uh, so the third tile is Camp Righteous, so haste. Uh, yep. Okay, so... Do, 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 do. So you <sighs> would basically make it right before. So you guys start pumping and pumping and pumping this uh, iron like a big, strong man you are. Let's see how that works out for you. Don't forget to take out your sabs. Sounds. Yep. Mm -hmm. You guys are very lucky. Yes. Uh, you uh, encounter nothing. Um, in fact, you see far behind you that it was probably a good idea that you did that because you notice a trumpeting noise, and as you look behind you, the two plesiosaurs that were following you were not able to keep up. Yay. Congratulations. You chose wisely. <laughs> so, <laughs> towards the end of the evening, um, Dane, with your perception, uh, you guys know that you're coming up on Camp Righteous. Uh, you would say you might reach it first thing tomorrow if you camp for the evening. And as you're making this decision, you know, you kind of casually glance around to see if you can go ahead and find a spot. Maybe it'd be good to stay here. And you notice on the side of the tree is carved into the side of it a glyph that looks like a red ant. It, then you see a little bit further down a small tributary, there's another one that looks like a glyph of a red ant. I believe we are getting close to where we want to be. Why is so, that? The task. Yes. Is where you wanted to go, correct? Um, yes. Uh, there is a very strong camp there, uh, standing by for, uh, yeah. My commander is there. Um, why? We can. We still can stop at Silver at the <clears throat> Camp Righteous first. 
maybe uh, rest up, <coughs> get rations, things like that, and go after your guide uh, and follow the end. Won't we be here. running into this camp before Camp Righteous, though? No. There... My notes say just north of. Right here, and then right here. So, I mean, it's like... To the south. Yeah, you go to Righteous first, it's right off the river, and then we have to go north up through the woods to get to the ant place. Uh, it seems, uh, you, you, as you remember, the Batiri told you that there's a, you follow the river, the tributary north to, uh, the area of Yelyark. Right. Uh, so, Salida says, well, um, that depends on how much you wish to save your friend. Yes, um, Yell Yark. Um, that is where, um, Shago. Shago, yes, uh, he's being held. I'd say, um, let's not dilly dally. They aren't probably waiting for long to sacrifice him to whatever simple gods they, they worship. Uh, but once Diego and I agree, we do not have the time to go and restock at Camp Righteous. I, for one, am perfectly ready to continue on in the jungle. Erzo looks at you, Dane. <laughs> For I once, he says. Kind of a side eye. <laughs> and he casts message. Mm -hmm. And he goes in his head. No one else sees this. And he says, You fool. We already want Shago dead. What does it matter if he dies today? Or he dies by our hands tomorrow. A sudden look of recognition crosses his face. He did not put Shago together with the person we were rescuing. And then he looks at the rest of the party and goes, I believe, out loud, obviously. He says, listen, righteous is quicker, right here, we rest. At this point, I believe we've probably gotten ahead of the goblins. They were maybe traveling on foot. This is... Lady Silvertus boat, correct? Um, yes, it is the one I purchased with Shago. So the goblins should be traveling through on foot. We have made tremendous time. We might be able to head them off if we take one more night's rest. That is an astute observation, Arizel. But I saw them leave on the canoe. We would have passed them. And I cannot in good conscience let this individual be sacrificed to whatever dark god these creatures think that they love, that worship. Agreed. 100%. Let's go. I cannot sit at a bathhouse and enjoy myself while I know a fellow comrade is dying. In There's danger. no bathhouse out here, my friend. <laughs> you have to... <laughs> I love the fact... Like, when you say that, Silver Tusk goes... You, I bet you, indeed, Camp Righteous will have a bathhouse, and we'll all be in there together, <laughs> cleansing our souls oh. with worship. I'm not even going to incite sarcasm at this point. <laughs> it, no, it just—it wasn't sarcastic. She oh, totally yeah. believes when you brought that up. She's like, she, she's yeah. like, yes, absolutely. Camp Righteous will be okay. a bastion. It'll be a bastion of good and lawful order in this terrible, terrible jungle. My man Dane, um, Shago, I believe, uh, you mentioned has some, some sway with the Flaming Fist. Perhaps this would be a way for you to build up some brownie points. Maybe get some, uh, points knocked off on your, uh, your, your warrant. I seek not to make amends with those people who have judged me guilty in such a way. I seek only to do what is right. Mm, and if foolish, that game but... no longer has any rush or <laughs> the party to do this. <laughs> well, okay, I... so what is the decision of the party? We have Friedrich. What's your decision? Yelyark or Righteous? Yelyark. Yelyark. Tetsuo, Yelyark or Righteous? Uh, I am. I want to go free the guy. So, yell yark. Yell yark. All right, Dane, yell yark or righteous? Dane is not going to help go to yell yark, but he's not going to overrule his previous statement. So, yell yark. Yell yark. Okay, so with one, with that, 
we have us we're going to yell yark so there we go as the evening progresses you turn up to tributary and you begin your journey up the tributary to yell yark so uh, real quick dane hmm? is not paddling his heart he is not trying he is not paying attention he is not furthering this the way that he was before is this something are you doing this outwardly or are you trying to like are you trying to like hide this are you just kind of like or are you just pouting it's, it's, yeah more more like closer to pouting he's still just going through the motions but anything would other desire, people notice this uh yeah they probably <laughs> so all of you are noticing a bit of a change in Dane as you pull up to your camp before it's going up the tributary. Um, He's does, not really pulling his weight. Yeah, Solita actually mentions something to Tetsuo and says, you need to tell your friend to give put a little bit more oomph into his tip. I'm going to put the bear in his place instead. <laughs> Yes, um, it, I have quite noticed that he doesn't seem to, I'm not sure, maybe one of, just doesn't seem to care too much right now. Well, listen, and she kind of, she goes, let me talk to, um, I'll talk to you later. She says, um, excuse me, uh, Diego and Arizel, may I speak to you over here, please? Absolutely. Um, so she brings you over to the side and she says, I have done this a very long time. Do you know what the most dangerous animal in this, these jungles are? Please, uh, tell me. That zombie T-Rex was quite formidable. She puts a hand on both of your chests and she says, you. I have seen more parties fracture from the stresses of this jungle than any monster here. There are stories of cannibalism, murder, wanton destruction of each other's property, backstabbing. That kills more of these expeditions than anybody else. I will not stay with this party if it should fracture to the point where my safety becomes an issue. I don't know what you two have going on, but you need to solve it. And you need to solve it before you two get us all killed. As for your friend down there, and she looks over at Dane as he's like just poking at the ground with a stick, you know, you need to figure out what his malfunction is. You, she points at uh, you, Diego, and she says, you are a leader of Hmong men. Uh, you bring civilization, the next civilized, and you, she points to you, Arizel. You say you are destined by the god or gods. Act like it. At least Tetsuo doesn't know what's going on with himself. And Friedrich has been nothing but helpful with Silver Tusk. Both of you are acting like children, and you will stop, or I will leave. I don't care about the money. And I'm sorry to speak to you so forward as an employee, but. I would like to think of myself as a friend as well. No, I'm going no. To go, I'm going to go hunt, and I will let you guys figure out whatever you need to do. I don't know. Talk. Gamble. Fight. Fuck. I don't know what you need to do, but do it. And do it quickly. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Give us a moment. And she walks away, and she says... Um, I am going to go out hunting, and uh, Dane, I will be looking for your herbs as well. Do you think you can handle helping with that? Dane, I think you should go with her. Uh, absolutely. I was planning to forage quite a bit today anyway. Well, come on, Grumpy fans. Let's go. And if you go with her, they both travel out in the surrounding area. Okay. So, Arizel and Diego, after mom just yelled at you for fighting with your brother, <laughs> you wish to have a conversation. Look at Diego Let's... and say, well... Mm. I have Arizel... a you, sir. What? I've... 
not known you for long, and you've remained a mysterious character and have only begun to grow curiouser and curiouser. What is your moral compass? Do you hail to a god? Do you follow some sort of virtue, some sort of Bushido or any other sort of way? Are you lawful? Are you good? I can't get a read on you. Well, my friend Diego, I am lawfully bound to making sure this party makes it uh, through the jungle. We complete our task as we were given by Lady Helga, and uh, we make it out of here alive. That, my friend, I can guarantee you wholeheartedly. Hmm. So, at least you are bound to the task at hand, but by any means necessary, in, including stabbing, or rather shooting one in the back? I will never, and I can say this with 100%, Cross you and this party. Now, the goblin uh, in question was uh, somebody that I hold no allegiance to. And uh, lying to him to get, to keep our rations, to keep our uh, livelihood it's to, it alive, keep us alive uh, with more rations, more incense, things like that, uh, seemed a good thing. I'm going to, um, incite your statement that you are, uh, trustworthy to me, that you wouldn't stab me in the back. All right, go ahead and give me an insight check. <coughs> and go ahead and... Oh, well, just do, give me an insight check. It's a 17. Okay. Hold on a second. I didn't lie. Hold on. I mean... At least on purpose. Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you you just look at Arizel as Arizel is speaking. He is a hundred percent being a hundred percent truthful to you. He, okay. You you believe? So here's the thing: is you come from a different place with different people, but a lot of the people that you've dealt with are very much like yourself. However, you have realized through this time that, especially with your oath, the oath of conquest there's no real good way there's no perfect situation here he seems a hundred percent forthright in his statements that he will not uh he wishes no ill to you or the party and wishes everyone to succeed but you also realize that there you two do things very very differently and that is probably something that you're going to have to discuss with him on these occasions but you see no malice in arizel's heart towards you or the party There you go, Nods. We do things differently, I understand that, but... I trust your allegiance to this party. I will trust you for now. I hope better for you when it comes to keeping words to those that we strike bargains with, but... For now... And he, he out outstretches a hand and uh, means to shake your hand. I take his hand and I say, I mean, I, people that I hold with respect, I will always keep my word to. Lady Silver Tusk is one of those included. Agreed. Okay, so we cut to the woods. Go ahead and give me a survival check, Dane. What was it? Uh, 
so it's a 14. Um, you are not able to find what you are looking for. However, out of, as you are going, Selita walks up with two more pieces as she rolled a nat 20 uh, of your healer's kit, your herbal kit. Uh, she says, I believe this is what you are looking for, and outstretches her hand. Uh, let's do aloe vera and something else. That's, so she has them in her hand. Uh, I go to take them. She grabs them away and she says, What is going on with you, Dan? You are different. I do not have a vested interest in saving this man. In fact, I am bound by a promise specifically not to. That is... Hold on. So, this man that we do not know, that, as far as I understand, we are going to save, you are not interested in saving? I go with the will of the party and my conscience for now. Thank you, I've been meaning to unburden myself about this for quite some time. <laughs> she... She's gonna insight check you, like, so she's like, Dane, I want you to tell me what is going on, please. Uh, that's all Dane's gonna say, so if she wants to insight, I'm gonna counter it. Alright, go ahead and give me a, uh, deception. Holy shit, that one. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're really bad at this game, and she says, <laughs> she says, then there is more to this story that you are not telling me and i understand why you may not trust me but <sighs> look into my eyes you can tell me what is going on then give me a wisdom uh, saving throw okay. oh my why is this dude always being That's charmed cool. <laughs> Tell me it's a DC 13. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, she looks I... into you and you stare deep into her eyes. And for a second, you almost see like slits, like reptilian slits where her eyes would be. Then it, whoa, whoa, you're, you're tired. That was strange. You don't feel compelled to tell her anything. Uh, so just because my memory is shit and it's been a while since this happened, I'm charmed to do this by the fucking uh, succubus. No. So you were basically told that you can be, you're going to get this done. We're going to release you so you can get this done. And you are under no charm. However, there are two ways to be well known, positively or negatively. Yeah, that's what it was. It was the... Or it's the positive punishment. Okay, thank you for that. I appreciate yeah. the, the refresh. She says, okay, keep your secrets. But <laughs> if you wish for me to help you, I need to know why. Um, I also found this, and she comes out, and it's like a couple of fruit. Uh, with that nat 20, she gets enough for the whole party, including Silver Tusk. You guys don't have to do those. All right, so we all meet up into the party. Uh, and we do watches. We'll do... I'm just going to start. We'll do... Uh, does anybody want to specifically hang out with any other character this evening? What if I could? If, if I have that information or no? Not yet. Okay. I'm it's going to be till next session. Nope. Don't worry about that. Good to go. Okay. Good to go? Okay. Uh, I, so will, we'll burn, just, I will burn the incense for tonight. Okay. Yeah. All awesome. right. Awesome. Beat me to it. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and roll me. Uh, uh, go ahead and do Diego, Dane, Friedrich, and Tetsuo. Roll me one d twenty. Okay. Nineteen. Uh, natural eight. <laughs> natural eight. Nice. Fifteen. Okay, so we're going to go, Dane, you're doing, I'm just going to do it like one of the people that rolled. So, Dane, which watch are you taking? 
Third and fourth. Third and fourth. Okay, Diego, which watch are you taking? First. First, okay. All right. So, Diego, you are out. Um, you have night vision, so you are in this... Uh, you were sitting by the low-lying campfire. You guys were not able to get into a tree this evening. Uh, but you were... You're sitting there. Go ahead and... Let's see. What's your passive? 13. Okay. Um, absolutely nothing. You're just sitting out there. The crickets are cricketing and the birds are, bats are flying and the birds are chirping and your watch goes without an issue. Um, the next watch goes without an issue. Dane, you are up with Salida for the third, uh, third watch. Um, actually, we'll have her do last watch. Uh, let's see. Okay. Mm. As you, as Salida gets up, uh, she says, um, I am going to go, this is the last watch, and she says, I'm going to go hunt for the morning and get our bearings. Um, I will be just a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and as she turns, you hear what, a, you hear something snap behind you, like a, like a branch snap. Give me a perception check. Which one of us? Uh, uh, Dane. Oh, shit, I thought it was Diego. My bad. Eight. You snap your eyes to where that thing was, and all you see is bushes. Salida next to you looks. Hey, Selena, you so fine. She so fine. kind of, she goes, did you hear that? I heard something. She, she says, would you like to check it out with me? <clears throat> Dane crouches into like a, more of a prowling stance, and it's very quiet. So he stealthily starts moving towards the snap twig in a roundabout way, not directly towards it, but like around so you guys move out around the sides of the party. Yeah. Um, everybody's sleeping peacefully. Yep. You move over to where it is, and there's a bush, and you push it away. There seems to be nothing there. Is there any evidence of the broken twig that I heard snap? Give me an investigation. Give me an investigation. With advantage, because the lead is... 22. You find the snapped branch. Um, you... There, are there are. There are small goblinoid footprints that lead from that, situ from that place. Uh, give me a survival check. 20. A... Appears to be six goblins, all running at full speed away from the camp. One of which footprints are s slightly deeper than the others. With that survival check, with that survival check, he was either a very fat ass goblin or was carrying something very heavy. This seems to have been a scouting party. I believe that they are reporting back to their main camp. We should wake the others and be on the move. So you go to wake the others. Roll me a one, two, three, four, five. Roll me one D five. Uh, Dane. Is it just select? Yeah, it was five. Okay. Up. So as you wake the others, what do you say? Uh, 
be quiet. I believe that there is a scouting party that has found us. They're reporting back now. And then move on to the next and repeat. Move on to the next and repeat. Uh, once you reach Tetsuo, um, Tetsuo, you hear this and you look up, you notice your backpack is missing. Where is my stuff? Where is my stuff? Um, do I have my whip? You have your, you have what you would keep on your person. You have your bedroll, all of your rations, all of your salves, all of your rain, if you were calling a rain catcher, uh, all your, what if you have, talk, basically everything that goes in the backpack is gone. I, so I have none of that. Okay. Um, mm. I, yep. Um, instantly we need to catch <sighs> them now. I get up. Where were they? Which way were they going? We need to go. Uh, oh. One appeared to be carrying something heavy. Let's, uh, let's that go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm oh. going to start packing up camp. If they want to run off into the darkness and chult by themselves, they can. So this is, we, we need to make it plan. Are we going by river or are we going by, uh, by running? I believe the goblins. Can track them. The goblins, they cannot get that far. We can outrun goblins. Oh, let's go. Go. We're, I say we're all awake. Uh, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Dane, you stay to pack up camp. Uh, yeah. As everybody my leaves. stuff. I'm just camping up. I'm just packing up my stuff and, and chasing them. I'm not leaving my shit out here alone in the jungle. Are we leaving? Are you guys leaving the canoe? Okay, so you guys, okay, so you guys rush into the undergrowth following the first path that Dane uh, goes for. Uh, you come up to a, um, you're easily able to track with your first thing. You come up to a small uh, river that is slow going and you lose the trail. Um, Dane, give me a survival check as everyone spreads out with advantage trying to find these tracks. 14. Okay. Um, it takes you about 15 minutes to locate one singular muddy footprint, uh, and it seems to be heading uh, northwest. Um, you are minus. Okay. Uh, you go ahead and follow that path again. You are going, you are moving, you are moving, you are moving, you're following through the brush. Brush. Um, yeah, I take it you guys are just running this way, correct? As fast as you can? As we're running, Dane has the desire to see what's ahead of him, and just out of a pile of leaves he runs by, a bird springs out. It's his bird, you know, a celestial, or a primeval companion bird. Okay, so you are getting your bird as in, in to help look. Okay. Every scout in front of us to make sure there's no dinosaurs or threats. Okay. Every, um, every, uh, <coughs> I would say about 100 feet or so, maybe, I want to cast Hell Sight. Okay, and Hell Sight is looking for anything that is hidden by magical means, correct? Nope, hidden, period. Anything that's hidden. Bring it up. From, okay. Turn you know, I should when 60 feet in my heart, that using magic to hide or disguise themselves. You're using magic specifically. Okay. Then yeah. never mind then. I wouldn't use it. Okay. Uh so you guys are rushing forward. Um who's the fastest, do you think? Who's at the head of the troop? I mean my uh, move speed's sixty. Oh no, no, it's not. My move speed's only thirty. Well, if you're dashing, it's 60, so mine's 60 as well. Anybody higher than that? So everyone will be following the person doing the tracking no matter what. Okay, so you and Salida are up front. And the bird's... What is your passive... Okay, what is your... What is the bird's passive perception? Fuck, how do you calculate passive perception? It's just... It's yours, right? Uh... Bird has its fucking own, I think. Okay, I we're gonna go with yours. Give, what's your passive? 15. 15 minus 5 for running. Give me a dexterity save as you run, you hear a kink, and you look down as a, uh, a vine that was hastily assembled and set as a trap. Normally, you would have picked this out with as 
good you are on noticing this stuff, but with the rush, you don't. Give me a deck save. 26. You dodge out of the way as a, um, as a log covered in spikes swings to the side. It seems to be hastily constructed so you are able to get out of there as it wham and just bashes down a tree next to you. Hell yeah. Okay, pass a pass. We're getting close. All right. Um, as soon as that trap springs, I do not run anymore. I'm slowing down to look for other traps. I don't care if we're chasing them. We're getting closer to their camp. All right. Salida slows down. She goes, what are you doing? We need to catch them, I thought. Uh, they're starting to be traps. They know this path better than we do. We may very well stumble into a pit, fall, and die, and I'm not dying over his backpack. I feel like this is bait for a trap. Well, I we need am. to make a decision. I am. I'm you keep running. Run in, you can run in front of me if you want. <laughs> okay. Letsuo takes the lead. Salida kind of sits there, and she goes, wait. I can tell you right now. Let's find out. Let's see if she, what she knows. She goes, Dane is right. We have to make a decision. If we push on further, something like this could happen again. If we go slower, we may not catch them. It is up to the party to decide. Make a decision. Erzel. At this point, we can survive a day or two without your pack pack. That's well. That's well? We will go get it. We are heading that way anyway. Let's go back in our boat. Tetsuo is uh wants to be persistent in retrieving his stuff. Tetsuo. Okay, you wish to go. Uh, Friedrich, what do you wish? I think that the scent the uh the elf is talking some sense. There's no use dying over a backpack. And Diego? If it were my backpack, I know I would feel the same as Tetsuo. I'm with him. Let's make haste. The group has decided not. I will assist those who wish to go further faster, but I can tell you splitting the party may be dangerous. Tetsuo, I understand those are your things, but they are just things, my friend. Uh, real quick, uh, sidebar, DM, is, my, is the tome that I have in my backpack, or is it on me? Would you have the tome? Would you sleep with your tome, or no, would you keep it? would be your... in my backpack. It's in the backpack. Yeah, I am. I really want my backpack. Listen, they <laughs> seem to be going to Yelyark. Perhaps it will be there, Tetsuo. Well, then... Nothing can be that important. It's just stuff. Why are you in such a hurry to get your bag? Isn't it just supplies for this? So... What do you know of me? I'm asking. <laughs> Just supplies. Does no one carry anything of importance on their person here? We all do. But... We all do, but I'm saying, Tetsuo, is there, this, tell us, do we, have, do we have to run after this backpack? They're going to Yeldiark, perhaps. We are probably there soon. We could follow this trail. Dane, you, are, you think you can track them, correct? I do. Listen, and she puts her hand on Tetsuo. Is there something? She whispers to you, is there something I wish I need to know about what is in that backpack that has to do with this? And she puts her hand on your shoulder. Um, Scripture. Dane is paying close Scripture. What, what, what are you doing? Dane is paying close attention to this interchange. I, did, I don't say nothing. <laughs> Yeah, Dane don't see shit, Dane. Shut up, Dane. Fuck. There's a conversation between Salida and you. That all you hear is a hushed conversation. If you wish to make yourself intercede in this conversation, are you doing that? Uh, I just want to know what they're saying. So, I'm so you're trying to actively listen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so she says, is there something, is there something that you wish to know that I need to know? As she puts her hand on your shoulder, you see Dane kind of move to the side and look at you. No, nothing of too much importance. Uh, just scripture of a god who once defeated a bunch of other gods I was in the middle of reading. 
Give. I don't know. Give me, give me a performance check. Deception. I'm not trying to perceive anybody. Deception. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. She. She looks at you and says. Understandable. Give me a insight, Dane. Give me a deception, Tetsuo. Nice yeah, roll. No, I, yeah, it's a good roll. Uh, you oh, got so so Tetsuo was able to convey the information to Salida with that roll, and Dane, you don't pick up. You're not smelling what he's stepping in. She yeah. says, understood. We will get you back, and I will make it a personal... <laughs> Give Thank me five minutes. You. Thank you. One moment. And she, she says, we need to go after this individual. We can probably make it there by boat, or we can make it there by foot. I have to take five minutes. Make a decision. And she steps into the woods. We should not leave our boat, but we should definitely retrieve. I just listen. I'm I'm all for you. Great. Let's go back. Get our stuff real quick. Belita knows how to get to us. Get on the boat. We can charge them down. Uh, we may not get our long, we may get our full rest tonight, but um, we will get your stuff back. Sounds like we have a quorum. Let's grab the boats and our things. As this moment, or er, Silver Tusk comes up to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank fucking god! I thought you could. You're all so fast! You're so fast! Oh, okay. Where right, so are we going? Are we going you, back to the boat? You are staying right here. We'll catch up with you. No, fuck that. I'm going back to the boat. Okay. So you guys make your way back to the boat, load up the stuff. Salida comes back and she says, uh, she looks at you, um, Tetsuo, and she nods her head. She says, we should take the ship and we need to move fast. Let's go. All right. So you guys jump in the boat as the dawn is, is, is going. Uh, you guys do not get the benefits of a long rest. This was midway through, except for, uh, Dane. Dane, you do, because you're an elf. Or, <laughs> trance. Trance. Anybody who doesn't have the trance feet does not get the benefits of a long rest. Not that it matters. So you guys move, start pushing through the water, and going through, um, and you see it becomes more and more shallow, uh, coming up on you see an embankment where it's just the water is like inches below uh and you realize you probably can't move the boat any further as you realize this you see a small what appears to be uh landing uh where something has gone in and out of the water many times uh and you see a large amount of uh what appears to be traffic uh with as you pull up to it, you don't even need to check. There seems to be a large amount of traffic in and out of this area. You see drag marks similar to when you drag your canoe up, and there are goblin footprints all over the place. Um, as you go ahead and portage your boat ashore, you see two other canoes uh, on the side turn. They're still wet with water, and you see a group of footprints coming along that meet up with these boats and these other looks like footprints there. It seems that a large amount of goblins just arrived very soon ago by a boat and a large arrived, well, six of them came off of the woods. Uh, they travel north and you can actually see a little bit further, it seems like a little bit of light is coming through the canopy. It looks like we're here. Um, absolutely, let us push forward. Is anybody need to get anything ready? I say, go. I say, uh, fear not death for the hour of your doom is set and none may escape it as I start walking forward towards it. The rest of you here just brother of Salida looks at you and you hear the the words indeed. All you hear is Salida just look at him and hiss. 
So, uh, I would say... Does anyone... Diego pick up on any of it with his draconic knowledge now? Nope. Okay. All right. So, uh, I would say, um, does anyone here have a way for us to make it stealthily? Help. Helpfully. Make it stealthily. <laughs> Diego does look at those two just hissing at each other, kind of looking left and right like, does anyone else hear that? But, yeah, at Arizal. Um, no, I, I don't have a way to approach stealthily. As uh, as I f finish saying that, and he looks at me, I just go invisible. Mm. Very good. How long does it last? Ooh, I should have looked. One hour. One <laughs> hour. Okay. <laughs> so you cast. He casts invisibility. You guys watch, and you see his eyes glow. What level spell is that? Two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you see. Woof, his eyes flash purple, and then he vanishes. Mm -hmm. All right, Dane. All right, so lots of good stuff here. So you guys pass. You guys start moving forward stealthily. Go ahead and give me stealth checks on your good. approach. Plus 10. Do I get advantage mm -hmm. with the invisibility? Yes. Okay. So so the the aid spell, it only works on three, three creatures. Mm -hmm. uh, is Salida and Silvertusk coming with us? Yes. I rolled a 13. Uh, so, Friedrich, uh, I guess I can roll my stealth while I, I explain. Um, Friedrich will uh, cast eight at third level, meaning 10 hit points. And um, we'll use it on Salida, uh, Silvertusk, and it is Azra, well, Diego, you're probably the most likely to be like up out front, aren't you? Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so then you'd be the third person. I'd say I'd say it'd be me or Arizel. Sure. Whatever you want. I can I got a twenty, so that is a thirty for me, Tetsuo, that is a twenty-three. Dane, that's a thirty-three. Friedrich, that's a fifteen. Diego is a sixteen. As, as as the trace, because this isn't a concentration spell, uh, I will cast at second level aid on everybody else besides himself. Okay, so uh, everybody gets to be able to how many me? hit points? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. How many? Uh, okay, so you don't want him to cast aid on you? I do, but I want to make sure this, that the spell is. You know, to the book, like if he's able to see me or not, or if he did it before. I, I just want to make sure everything's right. So you are, you watch as Friedrich starts speaking about the common man and how aid each other, okay. and he starts. We see them blessing. Do you say anything to let him know you're still there? Um. Do you no? I mean, not. I wouldn't say anything at this point. I'm focused on the battle, so. Okay. I'm so you on move going forward. forward. You do not get the benefits of an aid spell. Okay. Uh, so that gives how many hit points to each person? So uh, the first aid spell is at third level, so ten to Salida, Silver Tusk, and Diego, and then everybody else gets five. It's the, uh, wait, no, never mind. Okay. And then uh, did you do your inspiring leader? Oh, well, you didn't have time to do your inspiring leader. So do you wish to do that now? Oh, yeah. Okay. And what is that plus what? Uh, seven. So seven. Should, seven temporary hit points. So that should, should, that should stack with aid because aid affects your maximum and current hit points. Okay. So, how well, many people get that? All together. Um, six people. So, all of us in Salida. Yeah. So again, Fried Friedrich will just exclude himself. Okay. So everybody but Friedrich gets an additional seven temporary hit points. Okay. So that is seventeen for silver. Diego, Silvertus, Diego, and Salida. Okay. And the rest of you get 12. 12. All right. So you guys make your way through 
uh, push forward. As you move forward, you notice the towering trees and lush vegetation, uh, lush undergrowth begin to tur taper and to turn into something different. You break into a much clearer path. Huge trees still dominate the landscape, but the undergrowth has changed. A lush growth of tough and thick reeds that grow up to 15 feet in height adjacent to foul smelling water. The reeds are thick and swarm with insects. Passing through the first set of reeds, you notice your sight is severely restricted. Observation at ground level seems to be only a few feet and slime covered rocks and roots seem to make everyone much less secure than any other jungle footing. Okay, so you move forward and you walk in. There's a putrid swamp that you start walking through. Um, you notice uh, that there seems to be uh, pools of water that are moving about, uh, that, are, that are there. Um, you see what appears to be um, like just bubbling coming up from them. Uh, it's just noxious gases, but there does seem to be a strip of land that just moves its way on through. Uh, several of these towering trees dominate the landscape and there are uh, just flies just buzzing about your head. It is very claustrophobic. It is very disgusting. As you approach the first tree, you notice the insignia of a fire ant carved into the side of it. Looking a little bit further at the next tree, you see that as well. All right, that's what we're looking for. We're stealthily approaching. Okay, so with those stealth rolls, you do well. Okay, do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, I'd like to do a perception from my bird's perspective because we can't see shit. Okay. Give me your perception minus five. All right, I'm just gonna roll perception minus after. Wow, terrible. All right. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, so you see that. Um, there seems to be, you can have two choices. You can, the quickest way is to slog through the mud, uh, and like the fetid water, but there does seem a drier path, um, that winds around, but it's a little bit longer. Drier path. Path. Okay. So you guys move up. Um, as you come, <clears throat> as you go ahead and give me another perception check with disadvantage, Dane. Come on, Dane. Come on, bro. Uh, eek. Nine. Okay. okay. You move up through this area, um, and... <clears throat> Just as your foot falls, you notice that the patch of grass in front of you, or the patch of dirt in front of you, is not what you thought it was. As you see, it's a tarp. Give me a dexterity saving throw to, to avoid this bear trap pit. Come on, Dane. 12. You are just able to back off. You grab the rest of the party, and as you do so, you manage to go ahead and avoid the rest of the party p falling into this trap. You see that it's been lined. There's a small movement to the side where you can possibly get through. Uh, you guys are able to go around it. Okay. Tricky bastards. Okay. You come up and now you actually notice that there uh, seems to be what looks like a ramshackle bridge partially done covering uh, over the <clears throat> over the um one of these watery areas uh there seems to be a single log which you could probably traverse or you could continue on the dearth path which as the guide dane you would you make the decision do you have the party travel on the dirt path or through the water oh uh 
I mean, we're going to stay on the dirt path, and okay. I'm going to specifically be looking for, actively looking for traps. Okay. Go ahead and give me another perception check. Minus 10. Oh. 11. Yeah. Wow. You are lucky you are lowering this high. <laughs> As you move forward, you go again to... Uh, but you, you know exactly what you're looking for. Right in front of the party, there's another one. You stop them, and you point to the, the, the trap, and you guys are able to move it. Go ahead and roll me, everyone roll me another stealth check, please. That lasts about an hour, so you guys still have the uh, pass without a trace. It lasts eight hours or one hour? Uh, 16 with advantage because I'm uh, invisible. One hour. Yeah, yeah your, your advantage plus 10, so you're 26. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nice. Ridiculous. Wait, do I roll an advantage? No. no. Plus okay. All right, so that's a 14. Okay. 18. 15, 14, 18. Hmm do up the math i love the fact that the computer has a calculator okay you guys push, I... yeah you guys push up through um and you guys are avoiding this trap as you uh do so Hold on a second. As you do so, um, Friedrich slips uh, with a 15. Um, you, you go ahead and slip, and Diego, you go to grab him, uh, but you are unable to stop as he falls forward uh, on top of a rock, and you hear a large clang as his uh, shoulder pauldron snaps into the side of the... Um, of a rock. Almost immediately, a huge form bursts out of the water next to you. And let's see, what is your order of travel? I would be right behind Dane or near Dane, because I'm determined. Looking for your backpack, man. Yep. <laughs> uh, Friedrich would naturally be in the back with his short stubby legs. Diego would be, you know, close uh, behind uh, Tetsuo, uh, who would, I guess, be leading us. You wouldn't see me. Okay. I mean, well, yeah. then I guess I'd be, I guess I'd be up front. I'm behind with uh, Friedrich, then. Okay. Okay, so up front, yet again, we have who? Uh, so Dane, Diego. Dane, so one person tell me, Dane up front, who's next? Tetsuo. Dane's Diego. in the tracking, so Tetsuo's next to me, then uh, Tetsuo. Diego's following him. Following him is Arizel and Friedrich's in the back. Uh, it's first in there is also going to be the NPCs. Sounds good. I know you want to be in front, but I'm doing like the tracking part of it, which uh, naturally would be. Exactly. Tetsuo, would you have been in front of them? Because I don't know where you are. Um, I am. I am uh, pretty much right next to Dane. Uh, though I am invisible, they can still feel my coldness. So I'm. I'm just right next to Dane. Dane would be in front. I'll be right behind him. Okay. Diego keeps bumping into his cold ass in the darkness. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say, muy frío, muy frío. Okay. So, let's see. I determine who is surprised or not. So, passive perception. He, this thing rolled a what on its stealth? It rolled it. Nobody is going to see that motherfucker. Uh, yeah, 24. Um... So let's go. Somebody ahead has and... the alert feet. No. Anybody got the alert feet? Not me. Y'all able to see that? Nope. 
Yep, I can see it. Dark vision, pro dark vision. Okay. Well, yeah, nice map. That's a nice map. As what appears to be. I can't see it. <sighs> you, you don't have dark vision, do you? I'm a thief. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. yeah can you see it now? Nope. Yeah, whoever doesn't have dark vision, we don't have torches. Like, that'd be shitty right now. Okay, so. Uh, let's see, dynamic lighting, vision, you've got it, uh, night vision, you should have it, uh, what's your distance again? At, uh, with, we're gonna get you 60 feet, okay, uh, night vision effect there, low light, amount of light, alright, save, can you see now? Yep. Okay. Alright, so, as that happens, bursting out of the water comes what you thought was actually a log but is definitely not it bursts forward on its surprise round and everybody roll me initiative as we are now fighting the jungle <clears throat> need to lift up. Uh, you need turn order up hold on yeah let me get turn order up Blah. let me remove all turns Blah. Okay, everybody roll me initiative again. Ladies and gentlemen, this battle is brought to you by Lay's Ketchup Potato Chips. Go ahead and hold up the hold up the bag there. <laughs> Not available in the United States of America. Not at all, so yep. <laughs> There we yeah, go. Not available where we broadcast or where we're located. <laughs> Lays ketchup tomato. <laughs> we care that much. Not that a sponsor. And Heinz. Not a sponsor yet. <laughs> yet. One can dream. First we get the Lays, then we get the Mountain Dew. And then we get yeah. Raid Shadow Legends. Yes. <laughs> if you'd like to sponsor this. Program. All right. So everybody, everybody's done their initiative. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. So all of you are currently surprised as this creature dra like pushes out of the water. It moves. Uh, swimming. So it's part in here. It then goes ahead. Fight against Dane. 26. Uh, that hurts a lot, I assume. A 26 hits as it just clamps down out of the water. Uh, you take 25 piercing damage as it cramps down on you, and you are currently grappled. Until the end, uh, until the grapple ends, you are restrained and this creature can't bite another target. As it does, it looks backwards and makes a tail swipe at you. It's gonna be... Makes a tail swipe at Arizel. 20. Yeah, it hits. 16 bludgeoning damage as you're wham, you hit the ground. Uh, you give me a DC 16 uh, strength save. Ooh, you made it. Uh, I didn't say eight, Dane. Arizel, you made it. Uh, you um, almost fall to your back as this creature bursts out of the water, but you manage to stay on your feet. Dane, you were trapped in this cart target's mouth. You took a total of 25 piercing. You and you. It then goes... Uh... drags you into the water and dumps you underwater. What's your constitution? Uh, con is 12, so one, plus one. Okay, so I think it's what? He can last... One minute. What, he can last one minute underwater as it's trying to drown you. It's uh, it's one minute plus your con. Sorry, two minutes. Sorry. Yeah, there we go. Okay. That sounds better. I was like, one minute, shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, top of the order, Arizel. The crocodile is under the water. Um, it is just below the surface, giving you disadvantage on any ranged attacks. 
uh, or attacks, I would say within five feet of it. Like, if you're going to move out there and engage it, you'd have to be right next to it because it's like up under the water. Your whip is going to be difficult to use unless you're right next to it because it's under the water trying to drown them. Yeah, I yep. agree. Uh, that would be that would be hard. Uh, can I see it? Um, you can see. Yeah, it's it's like a foaming mass. You see Dane like holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> like imagine uh, like I, what was that? What it was like uh, Ace Ventura. Where he's like Ace ah! Ventura again. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty feet of movement there. Mm-hmm. Um. Nope. Yeah, you know what? You your heavy armor. Huh. I'm gonna go ahead and dash and get right there, and that's my turn. Well, as bonus action, sorry, I will place thingy. No, I won't. No, 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 I won't. No, I won't. that's it. Okay. All right, so Friedrich, you just watched a log come to life and start beating the shit out of your party. What are you going to do? By the way, we can't see your face. Right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do anything about it. <laughs> He's been well aware of that for a while. So long. Mm -hmm. Months and months. Is, uh, is this swamp difficult terrain? Yes. Of course it is. Of course. Okay. Friedrich will run along the bank to right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, he will cast Healing Word on Dane. Dane says thank you in telepathy <laughs> while he is also screaming so much. Mm -hmm. All right, you got anything else or is that your turn? That's my turn. Hell yeah, it's your turn. All right, Tetsuo. Holy uh, shit. Yeah, I reappear. You see me just boom. Oh, I'm going to come. I'm going to come right here. And then you see me just reappear. First, you see my purple glowing eyes, and then I bring into it. And I'm just looking straight at uh, Dane. And as I'm doing so, uh, you know, it gets a little colder and everything. And I cast. I don't know, minor illusion, and I try to make Dane look like nothing but a stick, something that the okay. thing would not want to eat. You create a sound or image of an object with a range that lasts for the duration. Five you create a sound like so. Five. You, so you can create an illusion. Like, I would say you might be able to, like, cover him in mud or something like that as an illusion. Um, but if you're just... Okay, yeah, so I cover him, I, I make him look like, um, I will cover Dane in, uh, in shit. Straight feces. I absolutely knew that was coming. I knew that where you were going to fucking land. I'm trying to get like, this to you out, bro. I wanted to stitch you out. I'm this shit, I know it already. So as you run up, as you run up and you see... All of a sudden, woof, in a flash of magic, you see uh, Tetsuo standing there, a uh, little bit of frost coming off of him as he stands there. He looks forward, his eyes go blue, and the next time you see Dane come over the water, you see Dookie on his head. <laughs> Back under. Well, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to not make it just for this Dookie on his head, but for the creature, he's, maybe, potentially. Yeah, he's but... covered in... Sh well, you're trying to yeah. co cover him what looks like shit, right? Yeah, I want the creature to re repel him is what I'm shooting for with that spell if it does or doesn't. That was the point. Not just yeah, to yeah, cover him in shit in the, the middle of battle. Is, you made him look like he's yeah, covered yeah, in shit. Exactly. So, okay. um, so all of you see Dookie yeah. on Dane's head as he flies into the water. Anything else, sir? Yeah, that's, 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 that's about it for me right now, yeah. All right. So, Diego, you are up. As my blood fills this gator's mouth, <laughs> Diego goes uh, and plugs his nose. <laughs> and uh, let's see here 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'll go ahead and zigzag over here. I'm so sorry. And uh, 
he is not close enough to deal any damage. Diego, uh, as you walk past that, go ahead and give me a dexterity save as you hear thwink, and you pull a tripwire. Damn it. 19! That's what I'm fucking talking about. All right. Backslash R. 3d6. You take seven piercing damage as a glancing blow comes as a large uh, stick. Uh, that is, this is a well prepared trap. Uh, a large stick comes down covered in what appears to be uh, dinosaur teeth. Glancing bro, piercing clink. You now see this. Clink. Damn. Oh, God. I should have put scorpions on sticks. Uh, <laughs> I really going to be a scorpion on a stick. Are, they, are these goblins or kobolds? What the fuck are we dealing with again? What's up with all these traps? Goblins do traps. Their goblins are always the technical one. Besides gnomes. With their counterpart. I'm tired of these damn traps. All right. Uh, that took care of the... Uh, Inspiring leader, temporary hit points. Uh, so Diego will uh, unsheathe his sword and point at the uh, giant fucking Peter Pan crocodile, and a um, a sword will appear next to it that dives down to slash underwater. So that is spiritual weapon. Spiritual. Oh, I gotta get that spiritual weapon thing. Hold on. Uh, that is 24 to hit for 5 force damage. Thank you for hurting this creature. No problem. <laughs> Hold on. Least I could do. I don't think I'm going to break this grapple yet. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. Can you see that? I can, yes. All right, is that where you want it? Um, that, that's fine by me. Um, that's a bonus action. Diego is going to take the dodge action first turn. Okay, 24. Yeah, you definitely hit it. Minus five force damage. Not 54, minus five. Okay, uh, yeah. Oof. We now get to Dane. You are currently grappled and restrained, sir. So I'm just going to say that when I was grabbed, my fucking bow was sitting back there and I had empty hands. No. I'm still holding my bow this whole time? You always have your bow, unless you're going to allow me to determine when or not you're going to have your bow. All right, because I've got to let that motherfucker go in the swamp right now. <laughs> okay, you let the bow go. Uh, and I'm going to try to draw a... Uh, I, have an, or I don't have a dagger. I have an offhand short sword. You let the bow go. Oh no, say it ain't so. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and draw by. I don't have a fuck. I don't know why the fuck I don't have a dagger, but I'm gonna try to draw my sword sword. Do I okay. have a bonus action or an action for that under these circumstances? Uh, I would say it's a free action to drop your okay. bow and take your sword. Uh, and then I'm going to try to stab it specifically in the eyes. Okay. Uh, called shot, so that's going to be minus five to hit. Perfect. Uh, attack rolls against this creature have advantage. You have disadvantage on this attack as well. I mean, not that I need it, because I natural one. Uh, oh. But I also have an extra attack. Mm-hmm. That I will try for the other eye, which is an 11. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you start swinging out, but you're legitimately in the mouth of this creature as it's yeah. rolling you. And why are you covered in shit? <laughs> you know, it really didn't, it wasn't too forefront in my mind, but I am curious. Uh, okay. he wouldn't see that, just the crocodile, I believe, right? No, oh, no, no okay. everybody okay. sees that. <laughs> that wasn't my intention, man. <laughs> All right, you want to try to do anything else? I, I don't think you can. Uh, I'm going to use my bonus action to prep 
a fucking. I'm gonna hunter's mark this guy, which is a bonus action. That's it. What are the what do you have to do? You, any movement to do that? Is it or is it just a talking port? So okay. is it a it is, verbal it's just somatic? It's just verbal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. Saying, look at it and say you, and that's my fucking hunter's mark. Okay, it is hunter's marked by you. Okay, Salida. Uh, Salida moves to here. Boop. Okay, and then she is going to take. All right, she has two. We're just going to say range attacks have disadvantage versus this. Because it's basically prone. 16 hits. Uh, four piercing, two poison. And... 20. You watch as Salida loses two arrows. Sink, sink. They both slam into the side of this creature. At least, hopefully, nobody nat one's shooting at this motherfucker. Okay, uh... Don't hit me, please. Two, six, eight. Minus eight. Okay. Giant crocodile turn. All right, makes it one with his bites and one with his tail. Uh, you are still grappled. It's going to make a tail attack at you. There, Arizel. 21. Yeah. All right, 21 hits. Give me a DC 16 uh, strength save. No. You, at, at this point, the tail just comes through and bam, knocks you in the chest. You are pushed five feet backwards and you are prone. So, mm, let's go. How much damage did it take? You took a total of 11 bludgeoning. It seems not to care that he's covered in what he's eating is very, like, I don't know. Uh, you know what? Hold on. Let's see how it does on this. Uh, let's see if you're prone or not. So, it is. Alright, so, covered in poop. Sound, it's one of those you just action. Wait, cast for beauty. Illusion. 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 Illusion on it. Okay. Sam. Okay, so actually, yeah. Okay, so physical interaction with the image reveals it to be an illusion and because things can pass through it. So okay. it seems not to care. Okay. Um, yeah, it takes that and then it moves an additional. It moves to here, dragging Dane with it. Uh, okay, you said you wanted to do hellish rebuke. Yep. Dexterity okay. save on it. Need a dex save. Oh, it's real dexterous. Mm -hmm. Uh, eleven. Yeah. No. It's gonna fail. <laughs> What is the damage? Six fire damage. Minus six fire damage. Okay. Silver Tusk, what you doing, girl? She's kind of fucking dumb right now. Uh, let's see. We well, no, she's cured, so she's got plus seventeen hit points. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 25.30. She is now next to it, and she is going to... Um... As you watch, uh, she runs up, and a burst of radiance 
around her as other ironclad figures appear swirling around her, striking at this creature as she does spirit guardians. Spirit guardians, most OP cleric spell in existence. Okay, uh, 15. It's up there. Distance 15 feet, the duration good and neutral. You can dispel affected creatures. Halved. Been so many wisdom saving. Starts or ends when I'm saying it's 3d8 radiant. Okay, so 15 feet. We're going to do up an aura here. Bam! Okay, so the beginning of the next turn. Okay. Whoop! We are up to you, Arizel. Mm hmm. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, half a movement stand up, I guess. Mm hmm. Five, ten. I'm within ten feet of it. I mean, going to uh, hit it, try to hit it with my whip. Okay. Disadvantage. If you are greater than five feet away, it is disadvantage. Okay, I'm ten feet away. Yep, so yeah, it's going to be right? disadvantage. Yep. Yep. All right, I'm going to get in the water. Uh, there you go. Uh, eight, and then 14. No, 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 no! <laughs> no, 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 no! The Give me the damage on the eight. <laughs> Why? What? Give me the damage on the eight. One. Oh, well. And I'm in its mouth. Well, it's uh, 10 damage, then. Okay, oh. so as you... And you just slap out 10 damage, but you wrap around this creature. It's go ahead and give me a charisma save there, uh, Dane. 13. You get pulled out of its mouth. <laughs> As you are, I'm going to do a contesting strength on this just because I think it's fair. Like, it's a fucking creature. It's got it in his mouth. Norm normally the attack would be like nothing contesting it, so it's gonna give a athletics check to see if you pull it out. Well, it's gonna win. It's, it's gonna a win. fucking gator. As you rip Dane out of its mouth and <laughs> pull him five feet, you guys watch as Dane comes up covered in blood. He's like, what the shit? <laughs> All right, your second one was a 14, you said? Yeah, it was 10 feet though. It rips him. Okay, it's he's next to you. It pulled you. Yeah. He's right next to you. Yeah, Perfect. towards you. Yeah, it can only pull it, so far. I mean, yeah, if you want him, to... makes sense. Makes sense. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, Sorry. so the second one's a fourteen. Yep. Okay, it hits the back hide. Does not seem to do any damage. It's no. If it if it matches or exceeds the AC, it hits right. Yep. Exactly. Okay, so you do do damage. So that is a seven, and. Uh, Three, so minus seven and four. Not three. Minus four. It's gonna do a. It's a large creature, so yeah, okay. Uh, charisma save, real charismatic. Twelve. Uh, you pull it. Boop! Right next to you. Ah! Why would you do such a thing? Part of its ability. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Anything else? No. That's good. All right. Friedrich, you are up. All right. Friedrich is going to come splashing through the water. <laughs> you might say he's wading through the water. Up to his chest. <laughs> Uh, and he is going to cast Cure Wounds for 14 hit points on... Damn! I feel a lot better. <laughs> After you just took 10? Yeah. Because I had the fucking HP already. It's 12. I was down to 25 hit points there for a second. All right, anything else, Friedrich? Yeah. Okay, Tetsuo, what you doing, bro? Uh, you notice it doesn't seem like this creature's uh, anything's happening with the um, actual. Yeah, the illusion's done. Once it, yeah. the illusion's done, disappeared. Sorry about that. 
I'm gonna move down to here. Uh, it just I get it starts getting really cold, misty, uh, like freezing air around me, and I will um, I will shoot. I will fire off right here. Behind behind the dinosaur dragon, uh, crocodile, Captain Hook thing. And, One of those uh, things. Yeah. And I just, you just see like, the, the, you know, like the same serpent type thing. Uh, my eyes are purple and you just see it kind of like fly You do not see the me. same purple. You do not see the same purple thing. Uh, the serpent okay. thing. That's, yeah. that's my, that's my thing. Okay. What level okay. is this? Okay. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to cast, I'm going to cast uh, ice ball, fireball. Uh, at level at level it's a level three spell or yeah and okay. so i shoot that off hold on i hit it the wrong one sorry 20 fits foot sphere okay uh level three uh dc 15 to 32 to hit 32 yeah 32 damage i'm sorry if it takes it all Obviously, That's I don't think you can feet. put it where we all get hit. Yeah. Where is these? Where's the center? I'm right shooting, here. I'm shooting it right here. Right here. Yeah. Whoop. Whoop. Sure. Oh nope. Nice graphic. So like right. That's twenty That's feet, right? Yep, right there. Yeah. Bam. That's okay. Cool. And DC fifteen, deck save. What was that? No, go ahead. With see this one. Yeah, it's a nine. Uh, okay, so it takes it all. Hell yeah! I'm burning three sorcery points, and you just see me do it, like give it all, and I fucking do it again, bro. Give me, roll me one d one hundred. That was coming. <laughs> Ninety six. And let me cast oh, fireball oh, again. Weird. Is high bad? It. I have no clue. Who knows what it does? If it's bad or good. Sorry, I've just got to open and shut all these windows over and over. Um, so it'll be good, for goodness sake. And I shoot it again. DC 15. This is ice there. Yeah. I like that graphic, man. That's really cool. It fails. So, a couple of things happen here. You guys, what, what does it look like when you disappear again and something else comes in your place? Uh... Uh, can you describe it better than I can, yeah. man? Okay, so you walk up. The you first you watch as Tetsuo runs up, and you see his eyes turning purple. And you watch as he just hurls this tiny little moat of ice. And it... And there's a huge explosion. The ice... The water freezes soul. It is this creature. It's trapped in the ice. And it, you watch as it's like whole half of its face becomes frozen as it just roars. A bellowing roar. Um, you then watch as Tetsuo, you see him go to reach back again. And you watch as frost pools around him. And you watch again. His eyes go purple. And... This one doubles, so it's that. So 20 feet is... Hold on a second. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> he doubled the sphere. Jesus Christ, though. That's <laughs> everyone, including him? Great. Everyone. Yeah. Was that part Again. of the sorcery points, or that was a D100 thing? Yeah. That's you don't know. Wild magic. Yeah. yeah. You don't know. Uh, you, so the thing is, right now, uh, you guys watch as a, a t and even like a small fraction, you see him just start chanting in a strange language. All of you give me deck saves. All right, Arizel, 14. I think I'm resistant to cold damage. You are. 20. Uh, you oh, still no. want me to give a deck save? Yeah. Uh, you're uh, resistant, you take half damage. Oh, yeah. Whew. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, so just... Uh, so, Salida, Tetsuo, and Diego do not need to do it. Okay. 
Okay. Thank okay. fuck, because I'm... <laughs> All God. of you take... The ones who failed take 25. The ones who passed take... Uh, what is that? 12? Down. Uh, ice damage as... There is a shattering explosion as you watch again. It's almost like as he puts his hands forward, you see the image of a huge serpent come over him, and it's just tiny little moat, and then poof, there's a huge explosion. Everyone is blinded by a snow, and you take 25 and 12. 25 and 12? No, 25 if you passed. If you failed, 12 if you do it. And, uh, but I wasn't in it, and neither was this right. person, right? Let's see how she does. Yeah, it goes fine. Thank fuck. Uh, well, let's see how great you are. <laughs> Anybody else? Nope, nope, nope. Okay, you guys watch as there's an explosion. All of you avert your eyes, you look back, you see um, Arizel is plastered to the tree, unconscious, and he seems to be just shivering coldly. Um, you see Silver Tusk is now frozen in place in the water. Everybody who is in that thing is now considered grappled by ice, as you're, there is now a frozen sheet of ice in that location. So that would be bloop. I'm I'm dead. Bloop. I'm, I'm unconscious. You're unconscious, yeah. yeah. Yep. Don't say you're dead, dude. That scared bloop. me. <laughs> okay. It, it almost... get, get more beef here, bro. Eat more beef. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, let's see. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh boy. Five, ten, one, thirty, sixty. You all see below you as one of these Batiri goblins drops out of a tree and just starts hauling fucking ass right here. Can't see that, man. Well, you hear noise down right. here. Diego, you're up. Damn it. Uh, so this entire um, part of the water is now frozen solid? Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and uh, do that up for you. Uh. Mm, so it was right here. So it's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Oh, it is. I gotta go to bed. No yawning. There you go. What do you want to do? Uh, Diego is going to uh, sort of sheath his sword clasp his hands together and then move through the uh the water and the ice over to uh miss silver tusk okay uh yeah. you get on there at the last moment you realize whoa this is real step slippery continue okay um he will uh, sort of air into slamming into her whatever it takes to just sort of close the distance okay all right, um, and when he is there, uh, again, he will push his hands together, sort of uh, rub them, and give her a great big warm hug and lay on hands for 10 points. So that's just 10 HP coming her way. Okay, she gets 10 HP. What happens if you get in fights with healers, Mr. Arizo? 21 okay uh is that your turn yep he's just hugging her and waiting for the ice to melt okay dane holy shit you're in a f 
you're in the jungle, but you're also trapped in a skating rink. Yeah, I hate this. I'm gonna struggle to get out. You're okay, not trapped me... in its mouth. <laughs> yeah. Give me an athletics. Better. Give me an athletics check. DC is gonna be twelve. Hey. Yeah, you're able to just push, 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 and get out. You are now where you are. Uh, you are in the middle of it. This is rough terrain. What are you doing? Uh, I am going to go over and try to break out Arizona. Okay. You are using the. Uh, so as your action, you attempt to free Arizona. Give me an athletics check, DC 12. It wasn't an option for him to break out himself. Oh, yeah, no, that's your action to actually break yourself out. Thank you, Dave. All right, yeah. so you can do that your next turn. Uh, okay. You guys see the glimpse of this as it runs off the map. Can you guys see this? Yep. Okay. Uh... Okay. Um, out of nowhere, Dane, a short arrow goes sink right into your freaking side. Ah, again? Damage. You, all of you look around. You can't tell where the hell it came from. Uh, Salida. How much damage does he take? He takes a total of eight piercing damage. Ow. You hear a giggle. Uh, Salida sees what's going on. She 5, 10, 15. Don't, uh, let's see how she does. Ooh. Salida gets to here, slips, and falls on her ass prone. Boof. Uh, giant crocodile is currently in crocodile heaven. Uh, she, she needs to make a athletics check to break three. She makes it out. That is her action. She moves slowly, seeing Slea fall. So she 5'10", 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, that's a touch spell, isn't it? Yep. Um, she drops the spear gardens and all right Arizel, give me a death save fail nice all right Friedrich you are up sir you, know, you are f currently a frozen a, in uh, place a song comes to mind in situations like this I want to break free. <laughs> <laughs> I want to break free. <laughs> and break free, sir. Athletics. The dwarf is free. So you can either use your full movement, at which you have to give me a dexterity save to stay on your feet, or you can move half speed to get where you're going as you uh, and you won't fall down. Half speed of difficult terrain. So you can either take your 30 feet of movement, at which you will have to take a dexterity check to stay afoot, or you will can move at half speed and not make this check. All right. Uh, I'll just go at half speed. Okay. So 510. Uh, where are you going? 510, 15. That's 20. Yep. Okay. And I will do healing word on Arizel. 
Okay, you get five healing points as <gasps> you look up and you are covered in freaking frost. Yep. Tetsuo, you come back to reality and you see this before you. You look at your hands and there are just wisps of frost coming off of it. You've never felt such power within you. And somewhere in the back of the mind, you hear the first click of a lock being unlocked. A deep, something very dark and very sinister is a little bit more free. You see the frost in front of you, your friends pulling each other out of, you know it was you, but you don't remember this. And the only thing you can see is Salida. And as she looks at you, she smiles. And that's where we're going to end tonight. Perfect. All right. Uh, awesome so game. FYI, the goblins that were the watches definitely saw you get in a fight with a giant crocodile and then definitely just saw Frosty the fuckhead just explode a quarter of chult. Well, they shouldn't have took my stuff. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Give like me fucking, my I feel like This alligator is fucking Shelob, and they're just like the fucking coming out. Oh, Shelob had a bite again. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. They like to feed their, their. They have a pet alligator. They like to feed her. Yep. Great. Well, thanks uh, for watching, everybody who did tune in. Not too many viewers right now, but there were quite a few. So thank you guys for tuning in and being a part of this. Yeah, awesome. definitely. Um, so, let's see, almost there, no, no, you don't get a level, not yet, uh, so, we will pick this up, uh, in two weeks, at which time you will probably get to Yeliark, and you can deal with, apparently, whatever is going on with Tetsuo, and have conversations on why you should never wear leather, leather shoes or briefcases ever again. <laughs> um, it's been good tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you. We got run DMC tomorrow, Tuesday campaign, Wednesday. Are we running that this Wednesday there, Diego? Uh, we are, we are. Uh, I don't think we've streamed one of my Wednesday sessions just yet, but uh, yep, every other Wednesday there, uh, okay. especially if anybody wants to, you know, join in, you know, you might get the opportunity to join me on Wednesdays for some of these short campaigns. All right, so <clears throat> from here is at uh, D and D Rollers. We thank you for tuning in. Y'all have a wonderful evening. We love you. Cheers, Goodbye. Bye.